Today's Southeastern Conference Football Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Atwood Chevy Olds Geo Toyota, I-20 Vicksburg. By AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By Alpha Insurance, call Alpha. By Big Ten Tires and Accessories, serving Mississippi for 38 years. And by Dairy Queen, we treat you right. of Jefferson Pilot Sports. Jackie Sherrill's Mississippi State Bulldogs are headed to their second straight bowl game. This year, the Peach. Junior Greg Plump is coming off a career day against Alabama, 14 for 28. One of those, a spectacular grab by Olanda Truitt. Billy Brewer has his Rebels on their way up the road to the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Senior Rush Shows leads a balanced Ole Miss attack. And on defense, linebacker Dwayne Dotson is a big play man with nine sacks. The Dogs and Rebels battle in today's Egg Bowl from Oxford. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college football. Southeastern Conference. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Stability is just one of our benefits. And by new Colders 29 and 29 Light. Cold aged at 29 degrees to seal in smoothness. Welcome to the home of the Ole Miss Rebels. Vaughn Hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. A great atmosphere for college football today as the Bulldogs of Mississippi State come visiting in this great rivalry. Hello again, I'm Bob Carpenter. Welcome to the final week of our coverage here of JP Sports SEC football and a little bit of history to be made here today. For the first time in 20 years, this game is back here on the Oxford campus. And for the first time in almost 30 years, the Bulldogs and the Rebels go to a bowl game in the very same season. It's a big ball game today for a lot of reasons. None the least of which is the SEC West Division standings. The winner finishes second behind Alabama. They are the same in overall and conference records coming in to this one today. Well, Tim Foley couldn't be with us for the finale, but Greg Bowser, the former LSU Tiger, is with us. Greg, it's great to have you here. And really, rivalries like this late in the season, what college football is all Absolutely, about. Absolutely, Bob. Thank you for having me. And I tell you, college football is exciting. What makes it exciting is rivalries late in the season, especially when you play them on a college campus. It's something special to be right back here in Oxford, first time since 1972. Now, the Mississippi State Bulldogs have a great defense. Their offense a little bit inconsistent this year, but they're great up front, and that makes things a little bit easier for quarterback Greg Plump. I tell you, Greg Plump has really come on and run the Mississippi State offense. Look at what he did against Alabama, which has a great defense, 14 of 28. And for Mississippi State to be successful, Greg Plump has to play well and have another good day for Mississippi State and Jackie Sherrill's offense. But the Rebels of Ole Miss has some injuries up front. In fact, they've had to move an All-American, Everett Lindsey, from tackle to guard in front of Corey Philpott, who with a big day today has a shot at a thousand yard season. Corey Philpott's very exciting and 113 yards short of a thousand. If he can have a good game and get that today, Ole Miss should have a good afternoon. A former junior college transfer doing the job in Division One. Now these teams are similar in so many ways, not just the points given up and points scored, the records, the total offense, the third down conversions, the Rebels and Bulldogs are neck and neck. Last year, the Dogs won in Starkville. The Rebels would like to return the favor. Why is Shoney's Pot Roast so tender and juicy? We slow cook it. With Shoney's home-style dinners, you get vegetables that taste so fresh. Ow! It's ow! It's just like hanging out on the farm. Ow! I always knew I had great taste. Ow! Ow! Stop! Oh, get The Bulldogs of Mississippi State have just taken the field. Here come the Rebels. 
The cannon has been shot, and that means we're ready for football here in Oxford, Mississippi. First time since 1972 that this ball game has taken place on campus here. They played in Jackson for a number of years. Attendance was dwindling a bit. Both head coaches and some others in the athletic departments wanted these games back on campus. Starkville was where the Bulldogs were winners last year. And now, with Ole Miss a 20-game advantage in the series and a good advantage here at home as well, they come back to Oxford for the first time in 20 years. And we mentioned the bowl situation. Ole Miss is, of course, headed for the Liberty Bowl against Air Force on December 31st. And it is Mississippi State on its way to the Peach Bowl. Down near freezing. Fortunately, there's not much wind. If it was windy, it would be an awful day here today. But it is cold, and we've had a few showers and a little bit of sleet in the area. And since they've been battling for the Golden Egg, Ole Miss has really dominated the series. Mississippi State has won the toss. They defer. Ole Miss will have the football to start the game. And, Greg, this really is a special game this year, not only because uh, of the rivalry. Teams are having good years. They both won 7 of 10. They're both headed for bowl games. So, really, what we're seeing here today in this rivalry is a very rare occurrence. Very rare, Bob. There, it's a chance for Ole Miss to play with a team, Mississippi State, who was chosen to be one of the top teams in the Southeastern Conference at the beginning of the season. Ole Miss picked 12th in the conference overall, but the Rebels have had a good year, and now this is a big game for them. As you mentioned, both teams on their way to a bowl game, but it's an SEC game, and Ole Miss would love to just take this one away from Mississippi State. Chris Gardner, the senior out of Brandon, Mississippi, is the kickoff man for the Rebels, or rather for the Bulldogs, as Joe Woods is one of the return men. He's a freshman wide receiver out of Union, South Carolina. Mark Smith, the freshman quarterback out of Wesson, Mississippi, is back there with him. Well, Bob, we get a chance to look at the Ole Miss offense first and uh, see if Bill Pott can get things going. Jack and, Jack and Cheryl's defense comes on. You mentioned how well they've played, so it's going to be a test early for the Mississippi State defense. Gardner, low line, driving it down inside the 10. Picked up there by Joe Woods on the near side. Tries to hurdle a couple of guys. And the Rebels will have their first possession Right around their own 25-yard line. Rush Shows, a 6'4 senior out of Senatobia, Mississippi. And he's completing over 50% of his passes this year. They operate out of a multiple eye offense. And it'll be interesting, Greg, early to watch their offensive line. They are really beat up. We'll set the personnel in a moment. As the give is to the deep man, that is Corey Philpott, the senior from Melbourne, Florida. He's behind Shouts with Marvin Courtney, the fullback, Thomas McLeish, the tight end, Jermaine Kahn and Eddie Small are the wide receivers. Now up front, Sebastian Williams has come over from defense to play left tackle, moving Lindsey over to, to guard, Moncus at center. Chris May will back up Joel Jordan at right guard, actually, and Clint Conley is the right tackle. Joel Jordan is playing with an injured, even broken hand. They got four yards on first down. Maybe a yard or two that time for Marvin Courtney, the fullback. Mississippi State plays a multiple defense, a three-man front with Foster R. Lee Gibson, R. Lee Gibson rather, and Kevin Keevan Henry, the defensive ends. Travis Boyd, Long, and Woodard. Boyd and Long combined for 19 tackles against Alabama last week. Williams and Harris at the corners. Kelvin Knight with nine career interceptions at safety with Frankie Luster. Bob Ole Miss has come out both times, tried the inside of the uh, Mississippi State defense, hoping to get some movement. It's third down and a short five for the Rebels. Charles with some play action. He will pass it out to the left flat, and the ball is grabbed by Marvin Courtney. The fullback circling out of there for his 12th reception of the year. And the Rebels move the change out near the 40-yard line. This is a good play by Shiles. He comes out and just uh, 
the face of the fullback into the line. The fullback comes through and goes out in the flat. Shaw's coming. He's got good pressure on him, but he's able to get the ball away. Uh, Shaw's a big quarterback, 6'4". He's able to stand in there, take the hit, get the ball away, fix up the first down. Courtney also averaging four yards on the ground. First down at the 40. Ball's actually at the 39 and a half. And skipping his way through there is Corey Philpott again. He's a guy they'll call on a long time in this game, many times on third down. Billy Brewer says he just has a knack of moving the chains when they need those crucial yards. Philpott does a good job of just getting in there. He kind of gets lost amongst all the defenders, and all of a sudden he comes out of the other side, and uh, you look around, and he's picked up four or five yards. He got four that time, second down and six. He's averaging 5.2 a carry. Rebels trying to set a tone for the ball game on this first drive as Rush Shouse changes the play at the line of scrimmage. They'll give it to the fullback. Tumbling ahead is Courtney over the 45. And they'll be left with a third down, maybe three, three and a half yards to go. Arlie Gibson, the junior out of West Point, Mississippi, on the tackle. The thing about the Ole Miss offense is they like to run the trap inside with the fullback, and they even come back and bring Philpott, the tailback sometimes, to pull a guard and try to get something inside, trap the tackle of the defensive end and get a crease in there and run. That time, Mississippi State played it well. State, the defensive end stayed at home, was able to stop the trap. They need to be just short of midfield for the first down. Chows will throw. He goes up top, turning one way, then the other was Eddie Small, and he couldn't make connections. Kelvin Knight, the free safety, on the coverage. Big play for the Mississippi State defense that time. Chows just did not have enough time, had to throw the football before he was really ready to do so. Therefore, he couldn't complete the pass. Rebels will call on their punter, Richard Chisholm. He's a left footer, a senior. About 40 yards to kick, his longest 61 this year. A former junior college All-American. And there's Tony James, who's within about 55 yards of the all-time return record in college football. They kick it to him. A low catch at the 22, and he'll get three, maybe four yards. He slid on the turf as his feet came out from under him. So nothing doing for the Rebels after a couple of first downs on their first drive. They had to kick it away, and we'll have a look at the Bulldog offense when we return. 11.43 to go. No scores so far. In street and your street. Three minutes and 17 seconds in. No scores. The Bulldogs get the football for the first time. Greg Plump at the controls. Completing 42% of his passes this year. 5'11 junior out of Hattiesburg. And at the 26-yard line is where the Bulldogs will have it first. They're an option team, and straight ahead they go. Michael Davis. And we've already got some words being exchanged down there on the field. Between the lines, here's the skill people. Davis and Roberts behind Plump. Alonzo Porter, actually, he's not wearing 84 anymore. Melvin Hayes, the tight end, wears 84. Orlando Trude and Willie Harris are the wide receivers. John James, Bill Sarton, Lee Ford, Shea Bell, Jesse James, a very veteran group. John James starting his 41st game today, number 29 for Lee Ford. And getting outside, out over the 35-yard line, we have a flag on the play as Orlando Truett, the flanker, takes it to the far side. Bob, these are the kind of passes that Greg Plump's going to be called on to complete because of the Ole Miss defense and the blitzing off the corner. If, if Mississippi State can get in a rhythm and pick up that blitz and Plump can complete these passes, that's going to give Ole Miss some trouble. Rebels a little too eager on defense. They lined up offsides. Joe Lee Dunn doesn't have a lot of depth on his defense. They'll play a two to a seven man front. It's Ford, Mays, and Brown officially with four linebackers. Thomas and Jackson to the outside. Ware and Dotson, outstanding player on the inside. And Boyd and Amos, Dixon and Collier in the secondary. On a first down after 37, Kenny Roberts into the line, and the Rebels stack that one up pretty well. Old Miss in the top five in the nation, only giving up 86 yards per game on the ground. 
But Mississippi State runs for about 204 yards a game. Well, the thing that Ole Miss, Ole Miss does defensively is they almost invite you to throw the football. If you look at the wide receivers, they're going to have man coverage. And Ole Miss gives you a lot of cushion, gives a lot of room to those wide receivers. A quarterback can pick up the blitz, get rid of the football before it gets to them. Ole Miss, Ole Miss is going to have some problems adjusting defensively. After a game of one, Truett is the motion man near side. Rump rolling that side, nobody open, and then he throws it to Truett, who's right in the middle of a bunch of traffic. There are flags on the play. Now that's one of the most unusual patterns you'll ever see. Coming to the near side, to Truett, tackle. and then ending up on the other side of the field to receive a pass while your quarterback is just about in the grasp. And another penalty against the defense. Oh, it's just a good job. The defense got uh, started a little quickly. You take a look at Plump. He fakes and just turns around. He wants to roll out, but Ole Miss has the blitz coming from that side, and Plump just keeps his, keeps his balance and is able to get the football off. Just a good good pass, and uh, that's what he has to do to get this offense going for Mississippi State. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. That'll make it second and four. Michael Lowry from free safety, a freshman who backs up Tony Collier, putting some quarterback pressure on there. And a heads-up play by Plump, who was spun into a 360, looked up and still completed the pass. Good job with quarterback, just knowing where he is and uh, got rid of the football. I'm sure Jackie Sherrill and his coaching staff were a little, little nervous on that play. Usually when, when you do that as a quarterback, it ends up being an interception. Well, the officials have their eyes on the sidelines in this one. They call an official's timeout to move the Rebels back behind that thick white chalk line on the near side. Ole Miss just getting a little excited about this football game, and uh, everybody wants a part of this, Bob. Even the guys on the sidelines wants to get on the field. Yarn, yarn. The young men who play for college football teams but aren't the stars, even the guys who don't get to play much or at all, they'll still tell you that these kind of games are special just to have the uniform on and to be a part of it. On a second and four, Hand off to the first man through Michael Davis. Bulldogs very close to a first down. They needed to get just beyond the 47. Chad Brown on the tackle. And there's a good look at Michael Davis out of Morton, Mississippi, a sophomore who's already racked up about 880 yards in his young career. 13 rushes, 54 yards against Alabama two weeks ago when the Bulldogs had a chance to beat the Crimson Tide. They did the uh, Mississippi State defense play, defense play well. The offense just put the ball on the ground a little too many times. Those Davis's stats in this is second year. On third and one, Truett came to the near side. Nobody's there for the quarterback, and he will be sacked. Cassius Ware was there. Lynn Ross was there. As the Bulldogs left Greg Plump all alone in his own backfield. That time Bob looked like somebody went the wrong way. Plump just uh, turns out nobody's there. Looked like he wanted to give to the fullback, but uh, one of the backs went the wrong way, and uh, Ole Miss got a big break on that play. Threw him for a loss, and now the dogs have to punt. Cassius Ware with his ninth sack of the year. Todd Jordan, the punter. Second best in the SEC, ninth best in the nation. And Jermaine Kahn is the return man. A low kick. They'll let it hit. Takes a great bounce for State. Down inside the five. And it appears they kept it from going into the end zone. The Rebels will be back at about their own three-yard line. As Walt Harris, a cornerback on special teams, was the man who batted the ball back. 8.33 to go. First quarter, no score. And here's a word coming up from your local station. little relief oh. near the heaters on those sidelines today and great field position for the Mississippi State defense because of this good work on the punt Jermaine Kahn was trying to keep Frankie Luster from downing the ball but it was downed anyway by the Bulldogs and the Rebels running with the ball out to about the five yard line on a carry by Dew Innocent a sophomore out of Pompano Beach Talk about a tough couple of weeks for the Gators. At Florida State today, then the SEC Championship game next Saturday against Alabama. I don't think too many people will be surprised if the Gators are in tough shape getting ready for their bowl game because they have two very difficult games. Second down and eight. 
do innocent again. He's a young tailback who doesn't always start, but they like his hands, and he takes care of the football very well. There's Juan Long in on the tackle. But they've given the ball to Innocent, the sophomore, twice back deep in their own territory. That's one of the things that you have to do, Bob, offensively. It's good to the ball. Somebody's going to take care of the ball when you're backed up. This is a Mississippi State defense. He just comes in there and watch him. Just read it. Linebacker's right in the hole. Looks like it's open. And there he is. Just those linebackers, Boyd, just walks in there and makes a good, solid hit. Boyd had ten tackles against Bama last week. Long had nine. Speaking of long, it'll be third and six for the Bulldogs. They will stay conservative. Do innocent. Has the first down. He's out about the 25-yard line. Tripped up by Kelvin Knight, the free safety. But do innocent on a great hole opened up by that makeshift Ole Miss offensive line. Well, just a counter play. Fake to the fullback. The linebackers over pursue good blocking backside. There's the hole. And innocent makes a cut. Gets in the secondary. Just a good job of running. Look at it. He's coming right at you. There's the hole. He gets inside. Just runs right in that hole. Great play by the offensive line. Rebels now two and a three on third down. That was a 17-yard gain. Nothing there at all for do innocent. As Keevan Henry... The senior from Mound Bayou, Mississippi, the right end, met him. You know, Bob, when you get some inside linebackers that are as good and as, as aggressive as the Mississippi State guys are, what you want to do is run counter plays. Start one way, get those linebackers to running, come back another way. That's what uh, this old Miss offense is doing now. They're faking the fullback one way, going back with the tailback, all they'll give to the fullback and fake the counter. That's been successful for them just on this drive alone. Billy Burr's team actually lost a yard in the play, second and 11. Giles looking left side, he'll go short. And cutting the ball up around the 29-yard line, Marvin Courtney, the fullback. Giles looked like he wanted to go downfield that time, but there was no one open and just dropped it off short, and uh, Mississippi State defense was right there. And here's a big play for this Ole Miss offense. You know, third down, and it should be third down and uh, about 11, or just under 10, six yards, excuse me, third and six for Ole Miss, and that's a big play. This Mississippi State defense is going to come after him on this one, Bob. We want to make something happen. It was on third and six to do this and ripped off his 17-yard run a moment ago. He's the deep man in the eye. Giles changing something for his wide receivers. And then coming across the line was Arlie Gibson, the nose tackle. Did someone raise up to draw him off sides? If it goes against the Bulldogs, it would make it a third and one play. Dead ball foul. Offside defense. This one's offsides against uh, Mississippi State. He sees Shiles. He sees a blitz coming, so he's checking the, checking off, getting a message out to his wide receivers. And when he gets on the center, the nose guard was just sitting there too long. He jumps offside, five yards against Mississippi State. Jackie Sherrill have really turned around things around with the Bulldogs. Last two years, eight and six in the SEC. The previous three years, a conference record of two and 19. A quick and rather unbelievable turnaround by Jackie Sherrill in Starkville. Third down, a short two. Too innocent. Fumbles the football. Who has it? It looks like the Bulldogs right in front of their bench have it at the Ole Miss 27-yard line. Juan Long recovers the fumble the second time he's picked up a loose ball this year. Charlie Davidson on the hit. Long just squeezes it here and he's getting outside. Good hit. Good hit. Gets your head on the ball. Good shot. And the ball comes out. Talk about him 24. Gets, it, gets the ball out of there and watch him recover. Long just hustling. He was in on the tackle and was able to get off the man and come and make the recovery. And Mississippi State is now in business. Charlie Davidson from right corner. The man with the hit. Causing the fumble, Long picking it up. Big break for the Dogs with 5.02 to go. First quarter, Rodney Hudson is in there at quarterback to run the option for Mississippi State. Hudson is a true freshman from LaGrange, Georgia. He ran the attack for head coach Gary Guthrie for the 4A title in Georgia last year, a high school All-American. He was called the best athlete in the state. But he passed for 3,100 yards and ran for 1,100 his final two years. Hey, Michael Davis took the ball on the dive that time, but there was just no room, no, no one to operate there. Ole Miss, good job defensively, especially the defensive front, stopped the fullback. And a full house in the backfield. Hudson will drop back and 
look to throw, but he is sacked back at the 35-yard line, Chad Brown. His seventh sack of the year. Hudson just gets the ball, fakes the option, dive like he's going on the option, wants to throw the football, nobody open, and there he is, the defender comes through and makes the sack. That's what Joe Lee Dunn talked about yesterday, Greg, getting those linebackers to come around from the outside. Sometimes they only have a couple of guys on the line with other people circling around the ends, and Brown, who doesn't make that many tackles, does get his seventh sack of the year. Now it's third and 17. Hudson. No one open downfield. And the ball was tipped. Johnny Dixon, the strong safety, the man who tipped the football away. Right. Hudson drops back to pass, and he's got, he's got time to throw the ball. He avoids one guy, steps inside. Now he just makes a freshman mistake. He's going to run the ball. He decides he's going to run. Then he decides he's going to throw. You can't do that. You've got to just go ahead and either you're going to throw it, go ahead and throw the football and get something done. It was third and long, and you, you need to just get the ball downfield, pick up a first down. A 51-yard attempt coming up from Chris Gardner, his longest of the year, 47. They'll mark it just short of 52 yards from the post. Drifting well off to the side. It was short as well. And a big defensive series for the Rebels. Mississippi State got the ball inside their 30-yard line. They end up trying a 52-yard field goal, and the game stays scoreless. Winding down toward the end of the season, Eric Zier of Georgia has the highest quarterback rating in the conference ahead of Heath Schuler and Shane Matthews. The freshman Tannehill has made an impression, and there's Rush Shouse of Ole Miss. Garrison Hurst, the rushing champ. Corey Philpott, though, is second. And in the receiving end, it is Florida's Willie Jackson on top. Hastings of Georgia. We have Eddie Small of Ole Miss, 37 catches coming in. And the kicker might have got roughed up a little bit here. I think Ole Miss may have gotten away with one. There, there guys just goes down. Tony Collier is the guy that for Ole Miss that came in and ran it, rolled into the kicker. Big defensive series for the Rebels. And there's a little swing pass out to the right side. That one is out to Jermaine Kahn, who came circling around from a wingback spot. Let's get down to the sideline and Bob Kessler. Larry Templeton, the athletics director, is with us. Larry, a lot of speculation about Jackie Sherrill's future at stake. Can you update us on the situation? Well, I think we'll have an announcement within the next four or five days that will make the Mississippi State people mighty happy. And it's, it's one that Jackie and I have been talking about for several weeks now. Yeah, it's, he's a hot commodity. He's been rumored a lot of places. I guess you're happy to, if you'll decide to stay. Well, he's done a great job bringing our football program to the level in the Southeastern Conference that we want it. And we're excited about where he's going with it. And uh, we look forward to many more years relationship with him. Not only is getting Coach Trill to stay big, also you got a lot of construction going to upgrade the football facilities. There. Well, we just completed a $1.1 million expansion of our indoor complex, adding a new football locker room and a, a brand new weight room that's about 40 yards long. And going to bowl games back to back years is good. That helps. So the folks can still, lots of tickets available for the Peach Bowl for Mississippi we, State. We fans. still have a few left. We asked for 15,000, and in one week we sold 11. But we think maybe we can get a few more. Larry, thanks a lot. Thank you, Bob. Larry Temple, the athletics director at Mississippi State. Third down and a Jermaine Kahn receiving that pass, swung out to the left side. Mark Woodard came up to get him from right outside linebacker. And the Rebels don't go anywhere on that offensive series. Good job by the Mississippi State defense. Barely giving up 131 yards a game on the ground and only gave Alabama 106 two weeks ago. Mississippi State does a great job, Bob, of just running to the football. If you look at uh, anything that, that's thrown outside, there's some defensive linemen that hustle out there and get to the football. Tony James has a return for five yards. He's 51 away from the all-time NCAA record for return yards. Left-handed Chisholm sails one beautifully. It sends James back to the 17. And he'll get about eight yards on that return. A long kick. Paul Head was the man who made the tackle on special teams, getting Tony James down after.
after a booming 54-yard kick, all of it through the air by Richard Chisholm, the senior. Just a good, uh, good punt, but the, the other problem for Mississippi State is the punt was over the one hash mark, and State had to return set for the other side, so James could not get back to his wall, and uh, good coverage by the Ole Miss people, not allowing him to get over across the field and uh, take the ball up the field. Greg Plump, the junior, back in there at quarterback for Mississippi State. 150 to go, first quarter, no score. He will option left, has a man with him on the corner, but he will keep it. And he's pulled down on a good defensive play by Cassius Ware. Good job, Plump, that time getting the ball to the corner on this Ole Miss uh, defense, but he just waited, Plump waited a little too long to make his mind up. He should have just went ahead and pitched the ball early. He could have gotten some yards from his back. A real makeshift Mississippi State attack. They lost Sleepy Robinson, their exciting senior quarterback, with a knee after four games. They lost Kevin Bowie, a junior, in the first game of the year against Texas. They will be able to redshirt him, though. Second down and eight. Plump quickly out to the right side, Orlando Truitt, but right there is Johnny Dixon all over him. Good job by Johnny Dixon running from the inside out to uh, to make the tackle this time. Just a quick out, you watch Plump just raise up, sees, sees the man open and throws it out there. The linebacker is able to get outside and make the coverage. Yeah, they had double coverage. Danny Boyd, the left corner, number six, was coming up to help. There's Johnny Dixon out of Harvey, Louisiana, an All-American formerly at West Jefferson High School there. Honorable mention All-American in the Ole Miss backfield last year defensively. Third down and seven. Flag goes down. Plump completes it left side. Out to Willie Harris. But there is a flag on the play as Harris had enough yardage for the first down. Dwayne Amos, the right corner, on the coverage. Illegal motion against the Bulldogs. Jackie Sherrill considers Willie Harris a first-round draft choice or a top second-round pick. As good as there is, he says, he has a chance to be. Harris does a good job of just pushing the defensive back off and then settling in there and make the catch. He's got the ball, good catch, but uh, fell against Mississippi Illegal State motion. and it's going to bring it back. Two men in motion at the same time on the offense. Repeat the down. Bulldogs had two men on the move. Clock runs now with 25 seconds to go in a scoreless first quarter. Third down and 12. Orlando Truitt in motion. Plump looking that way. Rifles it, and he's got his man again, Willie Harris, and he has the first down over the 35-yard line. Michael Lowry, free safety on the coverage, but that ball was really delivered well by Greg Plump. It's a good job of uh, finding the receiver by Plump. He drops back. He doesn't get any pressure. And watch the receiver just settle in, in, the, in the hole, just sits there right between three defenders, and Plump's able to get him to football for a big first down for Mississippi State. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. The clock runs down to zero. Bulldogs with a big play for the first down on the move when we come back. No score after 15 minutes of play as the Rebels and Bulldogs, as expected, go right after each other here in Oxford. On Hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. No score after the first quarter of play at these, as these two longtime rivals go at it on a very cold November Saturday. We'll update the first half stats for you momentarily. Not a whole lot to tell you about, though, in that department. Bulldogs running Michael Davis off the right side. They never could get him down, but two or three Rebels had him in their grasp. Mississippi State not generating much on the ground. Minus four yards rushing. 22 of the Ole Miss 34 came from Dew Innocent. 17 of those on one play. So 52 total yards for Ole Miss and only 22 for the Bulldogs. And for Mississippi State, a lot of that passing yards, just about all of it came on the last play of the first, uh, first quarter. They've got them in position where they are, out at the 37. It'll be second down and 11. Orlando Truitt motioning far side. Blunt looking that way. He drills it out to his favorite target, Willie Harris. Willie's out across the 45-yard line. 
Harris came in with 31 catches for 529 yards averaging about 17 yards a catch. He had four balls for 72 against Alabama two weeks ago. And Harrison's got single coverage because of the blitz. He runs the defensive back off then settles in there catches the ball almost break it, breaks it for a big game but he goes out of bounds. It's a good throw and catch. Harris you can add a couple of receptions to those numbers now. Greg Plump is four out of four so far. Two of those to Harris for 43 yards. They face a third down and a short three. Rebels want a blitz. Plump option in. The pitch on the corner. Forget it. Fred McCreary taken down on the play quickly. Johnny Dixon was there to penetrate. Lynn Ross from right inside linebacker was in there to help out. Bump just fakes it to his fullback here. Now he pulls it out. You've got one, two, three old Miss defenders out there. He pitches the ball a little late. Stellback doesn't have a chance. Good hit from the inside out. That's the way you play the option, Bob. Just get people running from the inside out. Make sure they get to the football. Good play by Tony Collier. He finished the play off. Dixon forced the play on the corner. And Todd Jordan will have to kick it away. Jermaine Kahn, the return man. A wobbly kick. He runs into his own men, and Mississippi State has it at the Ole Miss 20-yard line. His own blockers ran into him before he could catch the ball. Just a mistake here by the Ole Miss return team. Just backing up, kept backing up, did not see the return guy. And ends up running into him, causes the fumble. Here he is. He's just, he's just back there waiting on the ball. There's an Ole Miss player that hits him and knocks it up. Mississippi State player may have caused him a little bit of problems catching fielding the ball, but uh, Ole Miss uh, caused their own problem, I think, here overall by running into the player. Wesley Leasy, the inside linebacker, number 94, with the fumble recovery and another great scoring chance for the Bulldogs. A first down at the 20 of Ole Miss. Flags fly as Lee Ford, the center, comes across the line. Abdul Jackson, the right end, was in on it. Dead ball foul, offside, defense. Offsides against the defense, Jackson. He's a sophomore who leads the Rebels in tackles. He was a little bit too eager to get number 104 on that play. Just eager to get in there, and I tell you what, now it's a first, first and five for Mississippi State inside the 20 yard line, and this is a big, big series for the offense here. Big series. Bull House in the backfield, a wishbone look for the dogs. First man through, and that is Michael Davis, the fullback. Nothing much there. Dwayne Dotson came up from inside linebacker to plug the hole. Dotson, such an interesting story. A former Tennessee volunteer two and three years ago. Now he's one of the mainstays of that Ole Miss defense. I tell you, the Ole Miss defense, watch him just not giving any movement at all to this Mississippi State offensive line, controlling the line of scrimmage Ole Miss is, and making the tackle, brings up a second down and five. Just no, way, no place to run inside there. Dwayne Dotson doing a good job of filling the backside, making the tackle. He's a big play man. Their leader in sacks with nine. Second down and five. Angling right side, but unable to get outside. Kenny Roberts. Abdul Jackson atones for his offsides by making a good play as uh, Roberts was just about ready to angle that thing outside. Abdul Jackson just does a good job. He just goes with, believes what he sees, reads the ball going outside, and if he's not there, there's no telling how far that ball is going. may have gotten into the end zone. Mississippi State rushing today 11 times for five minus five yards. Jackson and his teammates set up a big third down and five. Plump looking left side. His arm was hit as he threw. Pass is incomplete. As Abdul Jackson said, I'm going to make up for that offsides one more time. And he got the quarterback's arm. Well, good job by Abdul Jackson just coming. Little stunt here, just gets inside, makes, makes the guy miss it. Now he's putting pressure on the quarterback, gets the arm. Good pass rush, just a good pass rush. They'll try a field goal near hash. It'll be a 32-yard attempt for Chris Gardner, who missed earlier from 52. This well within his range, but he's not been consistent this year. 
from 30 to 39 he's only four out of nine this year angles like this might bother him and he has hooked, rather pushed it to the right side and missed it there is a flag on the play though you know, Greg, when you see a guy who has those kind of numbers from short range, you figure if the ball's not in the middle of the field, he's going to struggle with it. And the preliminary signal is there's a penalty against the defense. Somebody may have just gotten a little too close in there. Oh, we got a personal foul against Ole Miss. Mm. That's a big one there. That's going to give Mississippi State a first down and put their offense back on the field. It might have been Abdul Jackson involved in that one as well. That would make the fourth consecutive play that he's had a role in. And Billy Brewer has to be concerned about the mistakes his team keeps making here. We have a live ball, personal foul on the defense, half a distance to goal line, and first down. This is the field goal. You see, this lines up. He hits the ball pretty well. Looks like it's going to go in there, and it just hits up and just hits just outside of the upright there, Bob. Looks like for a minute he, he may have had it. The discussion on the penalty was, had it been a dead ball foul, it still would have been Ole Miss's ball. But because Great. it was a live ball foul, first down Mississippi State. First down and goal from the seventh. And straight ahead, into the end zone, Michael Davis. His fifth rushing touchdown of the year. The Bulldogs take advantage of another mistake by the Rebels, and they finally punch it in. A good job. That offensive line finally came through. They just ran the ball. Look little count fake there. Hand it off. And there's the hole. He cuts it back. Six points. And I tell you, the Ole Miss defense has got to be getting a little weary here. They've been on the field a lot. Had a chance. Had them stop. Penalty put them back out there. And now Mississippi State gets the ball in the end zone. Uh, Jordan with the point after coming up. Excuse me, Chris Gardner. 12 out of 15 this year. No problem, he throws that one. So three minutes and 20 seconds into the second quarter, those old Miss mistakes finally come back to haunt, and the Bulldogs on the road have taken a 7-0 lead. Michael Davis has scored his fifth touchdown of the year. Early second quarter, visitors from Starkville have the lead. Well, it was just a good job of Michael Davis. He starts one way and cuts it back. Good blocking on the backside. Hole opens up, and then he just runs and hits really explodes through the hole and just gets in the end zone for the Mississippi State touchdown. The first one of the afternoon. Chris Gardner kicking it off. He'll pooch it high in the air. Taken at the 30-yard line, and Mississippi will get down over midfield with Marvin Courtney, a fullback, carrying it. They might have overrun their coverage, and maybe they didn't know that there was a sure-handed fullback up there in that crowd. Well, what happens is you normally just do the boot punt, the little high kick. The, you don't want to give it to the guy in the deep back. But here comes 27, picks the ball up. And Courtney does a good job of just going through the coverage. And before you know it, he's over around a 38, 39-yard line. 32 yards on that return. Great field position. Courtney will set up with his teammates in that offensive backfield. Big play they may have needed right after giving up the touchdown. Pretty small the motion man. Chowers. Left side intercepted. Ball's picked off by Charlie Davidson. And he will get it back to the 42-yard line of Mississippi State. Davidson had two interceptions against Alabama two weeks ago, and he has his fourth of the year. Rick Shiles comes out, and he wants to throw the ball. And as he rolls out on the play, having replayed, the wide receiver's trying to push it, push the defensive back deep. He's reading the quarterback size all the way. I think Shiles made a mistake as he throws to number four, Small. Small's wide open, running down the, the middle of the football field. So good defensive play. Davidson picks the ball off and returns it for Mississippi State. Now State's in operation at the 39 at the 42 yard line. After the Ole Miss third turnover of the day. They simply cannot continue this pattern on offense. Looks like Dixon wants to come in there from the outside on the near side. Plump changed the play at the line of scrimmage and Artis Ford the left tackle is all over Michael Davis. 
just no place to run. This time uh, Mississippi State does a good job inside defensively and not allowing the run, but Mississippi State's taking an awful long time at the line of scrimmage. If you watch Plump, he gets up there and he's looking to the sidelines for some help from his offensive coordinator, Watson Brown, making changes and making calls at the line of scrimmage. Still a 10-point game. Each team has tacked on a score in Tallahassee. That should be a shootout with those two offenses getting together. Plum drills it near side. Ball is caught inside the 45. Pulled down there by Willie Harris, but there's a flag back at the Mississippi State 41-yard line. I tell you, you know, Willie Harris is getting all kind of room to operate over here against the, uh, the defensive backs, but uh, again, illegal motion against uh, Mississippi State. That's going to bring this ball back. Uh, these teams are very, very much up for this one. Seeing a lot of mistakes here in the first half. Some over-eager mistakes. A couple of offsides, some illegal motions, a personal foul that really hurt from the Ole Miss illegal standpoint. On the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Mississippi State, if they could just keep things under control and not make those mistakes they're making, it, they could be far further ahead in this football game than they are right now by, by score seven or nothing. Make it a second down and 14 coming up. 10.38 to go, first half. 7 nothing, Mississippi State. And the officials. We got the officials stepping in, but I think the play clock down at the end of the end zone just uh, went out for whatever reason, so they need to reset that, and uh, Mississippi State can come up to the line of scrimmage again. Yeah, it's on zero. Now it resets. Dogs on second and long. They're changing the play again. Still has five seconds to get it off. And he will look up top over the middle. He's got through it. He's inside the 20. And he's wrestled down inside the 15. Orlando Truitt getting behind Tony Collier. Come with the blitz defensive, but that leaves you vulnerable on the corners. You got man coverage, and that time Plump was able to find his receiver. Watch the wide receiver. He's got the man in the slot. The man in the slot. He knows he's got single coverage. He's just going to run up the field and take it to the middle of the field on a little, little post, little slant pattern. And Plump's going to get plenty of time. There he goes. He's inside of a defensive back, and there's nobody home because of the blitz. And a very good play by Tony Collier to keep him from scoring. First play down inside the 10 yard line. Michael Davis on the left side. Ole Miss is coming with the blitz every almost every play as we knew they would before the game. That's what that's the way they like to play defense. But Mississippi State's able to pick up the blitz, run, do some adjusting on the run, and get some good yards from each play. It'll be second and short. down a short three. Plump gives it to Davis again. Nothing at all there. Chad Brown the right tackle was there to stack it up. His fourth tackle of the afternoon already. Going to bring up a like third down about three for Mississippi State offense and I tell you Mississippi State that time ran the option but they ran right into the blitz of, of Ole Miss. Look for Plump to try to adjust that a little bit. If he can pick up that blitz when he's going to run the option and change the play and run it away from there, it could be a big play for him. Third down and two. And they will come up a little bit short. Randy Brown was the ball carrier. Dwayne Dotson knocked him down from behind. Randy Brown, a redshirt freshman out of John Curtis High School, that great high school program down in Louisiana. That's the same play, similar one they scored the touchdown on and just hand the ball to the tailback, and he tries to find a hole, but uh, Dotson's able to catch it from the backside. Good defensive play. And on fourth and one, Jackie Sherrill will go for the three. This will be a 22-yard attempt, less hash by Chris Gardner. He's four out of four this year, under 30 yards. One looks good. 
So Mississippi State's defense does a pretty good job after a Lambda Truitt caught a 48 yard pass. They managed to keep the Bulldogs out of the end zone. 8-20, first half remaining. Bulldogs lead the Rebels 10-0. Bulldogs lead the Rebels now by 10 with 8.20 to go in the first half. Bob Carpenter, Greg Bowser, Bob Kessling from Oxford. Where the home team has turned the ball over three times. Two of those turnovers have led to the 10 points. I tell you, if you're Billy Brew, you, you know, you, you can't be too unhappy. You're only down by score 10 to nothing. It could be worse. Oh, Mississippi State has been down and knocking on the door a couple of times and could only come away with three points. Chris Gardner on the kick. He will squirt it almost straight out of bounds over by the 30 yard line. That looked like a gutter ball. I'll tell you, Jack DeShero is not happy with him. He, he wants to have a talk with him for kicking that one out of there. Now Ole Miss can either take the ball on the 35 or uh, make him kick it again. I think it's gonna, they're going to probably take it at the 35. The big question for Ole Miss here, Greg, they've turned the ball over three times. Do they start to get conservative on offense? Or do they keep trying the things they had before? Let's get a quick sideline update. Here's Bob Kessling. You know, this really stunning developments recently in Knoxville and at Auburn with Johnny Major's resignation, Pat Dye's resignation. Guess who is the dean of SEC coaches now? Billy Brewer, the Ole Miss Rebels. He's been here 10 years. Major 16, Pat Dye 12. And look who are right behind Brewer. Sparky Woods at South Carolina and Ray Goff at Georgia. But now Billy Brewer is the dean of the SEC coaches. Well, it certainly is a year of transition in the Southeastern Conference. Johnny Majors, by the way, coaching his final regular season game today as the Volunteers play at Vanderbilt. Pat Dye coached his final game yesterday, or Thursday, rather, as Alabama shut out Auburn. Hard to believe. Second down and eight. Option. Philpott, nice grab as Shouse threw it behind him. The ball was ripped away by Charlie Davidson, and uh, Mississippi State has it again. I tell you, just a good, it was a good catch by Philpott reaching behind him to catch the pitch, but then when he got it in, Davidson was right there and stripped the football away from him. Big defensive play, and this play starts out like it's going to be okay, but then the pitch starts to indicate what's going to happen. You see Shouse coming down the line of scrimmage, gets pressure, pitches the ball behind Philpott. He does a good job of picking it off, but then Davidson reaches in, strips him of the football, and Davidson recovers. Now four turnovers by the Rebels. They could have given up 13 points, but a field goal was missed. Then the touchdown and a 22-yard field goal by Chris Gardner. And again, Mississippi State has the ball in Rebel territory at the 37. 7.38 to go in the first half. Every time Greg Clough goes over the sidelines for a breather, he's back in there with the ball. And he will air it out. Far corner. And it's beyond the reach of Alanda Truitt and the man covering him, Dwayne Amos. Amos is senior out of Jackson. He's a very reliable veteran who's picked off four passes this year. Hey, on that play, uh, Billy Brewer wanted to, Coach Brewer of Ole Miss wanted to pass in a, offensive pass interference that time, but uh, he's not going to get the call on that one. And Mississippi State came out with their offense and just went right after him and tried to get the big play and put it in the end zone. I think Coach Brewer knows inside that, you know, he's just kind of laughing. They tried to get the call, but uh, the official said no way. Second and ten, draw play, forget it. It was Artis Ford right there to meet the ball carrier. And he just held him up long enough for Cassius Ware and his teammates to finish off the kill. 
He will be faced with a third and long. They have to get the ball down to the 27 yard line of Ole Miss. Good job by Ford. He just make his, makes the guy miss him, and all of a sudden he's in the backfield just about the time the fullback gets the football. Makes a good hit and uh, big defensive play. As a senior from uh, Florida. And the third down and 10. Lump looking left side. Rifles it out there. Too tall for Orlando Truitt. This Ole Miss defense, you've got to give them a lot of credit. They've been out there a long time in this first half. And they will force a fourth down play. Probably a punt coming up. You got man coverage out there. And the inside receiver just runs a, runs an out route. He was open. Just the, the ball just was uh, just dropped it. Would have been a big play. May not have gotten the first down, but it would have been a big play for the offense and uh, would have gave Jack and Sharon an opportunity perhaps to even consider going for it or put him in range for try field goal. Todd Jordan. Mississippi State will kick the football with no return men back there. Jordan had a 50-yarder earlier today. We want to get this one out of bounds somewhere down inside that 15 or 10. He will pooch it down the middle of the field, and his cover guys can't reach it. He didn't hang it up very long, and the Rebels get a bit of a break. They'll get the football back at their own 20-yard line, down by 10. But the big question is, what will they do with the football? Six thirty-six to go, first half. Mississippi State by ten. Ole Miss defense has held again. They got a shootout going in Tallahassee. Look at that. Not even halftime. Thirty-one seventeen. Rushaus has his pass batted down. Daniel Boyd. Here's a guy that his coach calls a throwback to the '60s defensively. Boyd had a recent stretch of three times in 15 games named SEC defensive player of the week and here's why he does a good job of fighting off of a blocker keeps him off his legs and jumps gets a hand on the football knocks the pass down just good play by by the senior from uh, Mississippi Bart does a good job just fighting off the play the blocker right up there in the Memphis area Memphis prep high school in South Haven nothing at all there for Corey Philpott Daniel Boyd again he's an academic All-American He's always been an outstanding student, a preseason All-SEC after making the second team last year. He's everywhere. Now, third and eight, here's a big, big defensive play from Mississippi State. If they can come up with the play and stop this Ole Miss offense, the Ole Miss, you want to try to get the first down and keep things going. Third down and eight. Charles lets him come, throws the screen, near side, out over the 30-yard line for a first down, it appears, is Marvin Courtney. Linebacker on the stop. It's a good play. Shouts drops back. Ole Miss has the screen set to both sides, and Shouts decides to throw it over to Courtney, who got a couple of blockers in front of him and sees the 30 yard line. That's where he has to get for a first down. Puts his head down and gets the first. That's a big play for Ole Miss. Corey Philpott will get a couple. Keeve and Henry. The right end, senior, out of Mound Bayou, Mississippi, there to meet him. They've got an experienced front with Arlie Gibson and Tim Foster Juniors. They've had to do a lot of adjusting to their linebacking core, though. They've had two left outside linebackers hurt. Senior Torrance Brown with an ankle injury that's termed as pretty bad. Keith Joseph with an ankle injury. He's a senior. Shouse will roll right, look left, and way up top. Too tall for Eddie Small. Charles just turned that time his receiver was covered and he was under pressure. He did a good job of just throwing the football away. That was Jerome Brown, number 98, was in there pressuring uh, Charles and forced him to throw the ball away. And Charlie Davidson was out there on the coverage, Greg. The way he's been making big plays today, you better keep the ball away from him. Davidson had good coverage and, it, you know, uh, Charles did a good job. The senior quarterback just got the football, threw it out of bounds and start over again. Another third and long. Their third and six, the Rebels are on third down. It's another third and eight for them their own 33. Small motions far aside. Chow's looking that way. Waiting. Too tall. Ball is away and incomplete. Eddie Small, the intended receiver. And I'll say one thing. Rush Chow's 
was watching him all the way. There's not a whole lot of deception taking place on the part of the Ole Miss quarterback right now. Not at all. Your receiver is able to smile is able to get inside of him and there's number four running across the middle. Just threw it a little too high. When you throw the ball high across the middle to your wide receivers, they don't exactly stretch their arms all the way out like that. They know they're going to take a hit. So uh, you want to get the ball down as a quarterback. Try to hit him between the numbers. Tony James back there waiting for the kick from Richard Chisholm. Chisholm wobbles one short. James has the ball twist away from him. And who's going to get this one? It's right in front of the Ole Miss bench. And the Rebels say they've got it. This would be a big break for Ole Miss if they could come up with this football. Still trying to unfile them there. And it's a big break for the Ole Miss offense to get back on the field again after having to punt away to Mississippi State. Well, the Ole Miss offense is on the field. Bob, I assume it's the ball. Never did see who came up with it. Might have been Danny Boyd. There's a punch just rolling around there. And there's number six coming in, and he appears to be the guy who fell on it. Boyd, good job. Heads up coming down the field and recovers the ball for Ole Miss. Just outside the 36 of Mississippi State. 441 to go before halftime. Takes to Courtney, shows will option. Phil Pop getting outside, turning it up inside the 30. They will mark him out of bounds inside the 28-yard line. Good job of running the option by, by Charles that time. He comes down the line of scrimmage. He's got two people on him. He's watching the football, watching the defender all the way, and then makes a quick decision here. Pitch the ball, and Phil Pot goes outside. He's, you, you're not going to catch him. Harris has to come up from his cornerback spot to make the tackle. And with nine, it'll be second and short. We'll see if the Rebels do something like less than con or more than conservative here, but they won't. They'll give it to Philpott, and he will get down inside the 10. They say we'll stay with our base offense on second and short. It took a free safety Kelvin Knight to stop Corey Philpott. So here's the play. Philpott just takes the ball. It's an off tackle handoff. The hole opens up. He makes a guy miss. Two tackle. Another guy miss. And then he just heads for the end zone. But uh, just a little short. He's caught at the seven yard line. Corey Philpott. Itawamba Community College where he played two years ago. And now as a senior finally getting his chance to be a star. Two tight ends in there on first and goal from the seven. Chows. Left side. Tosses it. Touchdown. It's Courtney, the fullback. Marvin Courtney with his third touchdown catch of the year. Russ Shows has thrown for his ninth touchdown of the year. And the Rebels take advantage of the Bulldog turnover and get on the board. They come out with a full house backfield. Just fake the option down the line and uh, he's wide open. Just lay the football out there. Let him catch the ball and Courtney gets the touchdown. Ryan Lee for the extra point. And he got it through. What a kick. I'm surprised it didn't hit anybody in the helmet on the way through there. A knuckleball. He checks the turf just to make sure his coach knows something went wrong there. But he did get the ball over the crossbar. Holy cow. Good job on the kicker. He was just getting the ball up. Getting the ball up and uh, getting it in. You know, a touchdown there. Ole Miss came out in every formation that indicated they were going to run. Courtney was in a full house backfield, and uh, Charles just pulls up instead of running the action and throws it out there. Courtney's wide open. Those are the tough passes to catch is when, you, when you're out there by yourself and you have time to think about it. And he's just happy he was able to pull that one in. Just a three play, 36 yard drive that took 42 seconds after the fumble recovery on the punt. And Ole Miss is right back in the football game with 3.59 to go in the first half of play. I tell you, Tony James, you know, that fumble on the uh, on the punt really cost the uh, Mississippi State team. Now, now Ole Miss is back in. This is 7 to 10, and Ole Miss has a shot. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast, a copyrighted presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. 
Bob Carpenter, Greg Bowser, Bob Kessling from Oxford. Brand new ball game as Brian Lee kicks it off. They'll float it down to the four-yard line for Tony James. He will stay on his feet and get over the 30. He fumbles. Who has it? Ole Miss has it. Tony James just, uh, just trying to pick up the extra yards. Extra effort by James, and he loses the football. Ole Miss gets the football. Big, big play for Ole Miss again. It was an outstanding 31-yard return, but no possession at the end. Hey, watch Tony James. He's got the ball. He just wants to make amends for the last time, fumbling the punt. Breaks two tackles, three tackles, puts the hand down. Now he's trying to get that extra yard, and somebody comes in and just strips him of the football. Gerald Vaughn causing the fumble. And Vaughn also recovers the fumble, Bob. Good job on special teams by Ole Miss. A stunning turn of events here. As the Rebels looking dead for the first quarter and a half of this game, even more. Now they get a touchdown after a fumbled punt. A possession after a fumbled kickoff, and they have a chance to take the lead. Challenge up top, left side. And it was almost picked off by Kelvin Knight. Eddie Small, the intended receiver. Good job that time by the Mississippi State secondary. Just uh, reading the quarterback and Knight getting over there. Almost intercepted the football, but uh, Chow's got away with one there. As Knight, the 6'1 junior from Natchez, Mississippi. Well, he was just out there playing center field as free safety spot. Saw that ball hanging up in the air. Well, Chow's now 6 of 12, 30 yards. A touchdown and an interception. Second down and 10. 3.45 to go in the half. And it's too far for more Marvin Courtney. Fullback has obviously been his favorite receiver here today. Well, the thing that the Ole Miss offense is starting to do, Bob, with the fullback is because of the, the aggressiveness of the linebackers of Mississippi State, Ole Miss is running the fullback through the line of scrimmage, faking to him, and then coming back with a little pass over there because the linebackers normally cover the fullback. And uh, the guy's open. That time, Kyle just threw the ball a little high for Courtney to handle. Third down and 10 at the 34. Charles has Phil Potts circling to his right, gets it to him, breaks one tackle, trying to get outside, and he is taken down by guess who, Daniel Boyd. Good job of reading by Daniel Boyd at that time. He got out there and made the tackle. And that possibly takes them out of field goal range. Brian Lee has kicked a 49-yarder this year. We'll see how... Billy Brewer plays it. Boy just fights through it, fights off a blocker and gets outside, makes a good open field tackle on uh, on a guy that could really just get away from you, Phil Pot. Just catches him by the by the heels and pulls him down. Well, I don't see the field goal kicker going out there yet. They tried one from where they would snap it. It would be a monstrous field goal of 55 plus. Looks like Ole Miss is probably going to just go ahead and take the, perhaps take the penalty here and punt the ball because the five yards doesn't hurt them real bad. They can try to get it, get the ball down inside the five. Well, Greg, this has been such a game of field position. So Ole Miss, after having some nasty field position earlier, now has the better of it. And a delay of game against Ole Miss will move the ball back to the Mississippi State 44. Pretty irrelevant on the punt coming up by Richard Chisholm. Hopefully that'll give the punter a little more room to operate and uh, maybe try to get an angle, kick the ball out of bounds. And James is back to return. Remember, he, he's fumbled the last two times he touched the ball. That is Scott Gamina, a free safety, who's back to return the kick if he gets his hands on it. This one really hangs up in the air. And a fair catch at the 18-yard line and a flag on the play. Well, it looks like that one's going to be against Ole Miss. They didn't give him enough room to catch the football. You have to give him room to catch the ball, and he can call for the fair catch, and there's a flag. Here it is. Just a nice, short punt. Camina gets underneath. Here comes the Ole Miss player, interferes with him, 66, gets in his way, but he's still able to make the catch. So. Linebacker. Linebacker Derek King was the first guy through 66. What a game of mistakes and momentum this has been. Now Mississippi State will take over at its own 23-yard line with 2.25 remaining in the first half. 
10-7. Bulldogs lead the Rebels. Truett motioning near side. Nobody there for Plump. Looks like a busted play. He will fire it out to the right side. A little too tall for Orlando Truett. It's the second time today that his backs have left him alone back there. Greg Plump had to improvise. It looked like the, one of the, either the backs or Plump went the wrong way, but there was nobody there to fake the ball to. But Plump does look such a good job. Once he gets set up, he saw the defender coming, was able to elude the rush and almost complete the pass to Truett. Second down at the 24. Each team with all of its timeouts left. There could be a lot of strategy in that regard in the last couple minutes of this half. the play. And a rather sloppy looking draw play to Michael Davis. Quarterback and fullback just about running into each other. Michael Lowry from free safety helping on the stop. I tell you, not a real clean handoff there, but uh, Michael Davis gets the football and picks up some yards. Puts up, puts uh, Mississippi State in a second down, third, third down and shot. Uh, looks like it'll be third down about four. They'll call it a long three. Trump looking right side. Ball was tipped. And then it was unable to be caught. And with a shot at intercepting that ball was Johnny Dixon after the ball was tipped by Dwayne Dotson. The, the wide receivers here, they're getting man-to-man -man coverage, but uh, almost got that one intercepted. So you got three receivers outside. The, in, the slot guy goes out. And it's almost intercepted. If he intercepts that football, it's six points Ole Miss. That's Johnny Dixon, the junior. He from Harvey, Louisiana. If he'd have got a hold of that one, he'd have been dancing in the end zone. <laughs> All alone. By Jordan. With Jermaine Kahn back to receive it. Jordan with a low end over end. What kind of bounce does he oh, get? It hits like an Ole Miss player. And that will belong to Mississippi State if that's what happened. It hit a rebel in the back. What a mistake, Bob. The guy just running down the field to cover the punt. A, a low line drive punt hits him in the back. And Mississippi State makes the recovery. First down, Mississippi State. The ball hit right on the back of the rebels. Michael Lowry, it appeared. He's just running down the field to cover the cover the punt and uh, see if we've got it here. It's a low line drive kick. He doesn't even see it. there. The ball comes in. Hits him just on the back. Recovered Ole Miss, Mississippi State football. Yeah, Lowry, the man had hit. And then Wesley Leasy coming up with the ball for Mississippi State. First down off the 33 with a minute 27 to go. The play clock never got started there. And Plump, after a gain of about eight, will be pulled down to the 25-yard line. Mississippi State got away with one, Bob. The play clock, as you mentioned, didn't start. Plump took a long time, long time at the line of scrimmage. If you watch how it happens, here comes the wing back. He starts around, looks at things, and there he is. He just, I mean, he was at the line of scrimmage a long time, and uh, Ole Miss had it defended. Plump just used his ability to take it up the field. I think the got officials some, call a timeout. I think they've got some problems with the play clock as they, uh, the official discuss it. Yeah, now the clock keeps running while the officials talk about it. seconds left to go. The officials are going to just discuss it for, and uh, they may just turn the play clocks off here, Bob. Well, they might be better off without them because they've really been confusing to watch. And here we go. The play clocks are working and uh, put the ball back in play. Rebel fans hoping for another good defensive series by their squad here. Second down and one. Draw play. Nothing much there at all. Lynn Ross stopping Michael Davis and the Bulldogs asking for a timeout with 42 seconds to go. Fullback was able to pick up the first down that time, but nothing much after that. And uh, 
Mississippi State wants to talk it over. I'm sure that uh, Jackie Sherrill wants to try to get it in the end zone here. If he can put seven points on the board and uh, go in up 17-7 perhaps at halftime. Well, coaches always expect that special teams and mistakes might make a difference in a big ball game. But there have been things happening in this first half that Billy Brewer or Jackie Sherrill could never even dream of. I mean, who would believe that, uh, you know, you have a, a fine kick returner like uh, Tony James and, and he drops the ball twice and Ole Miss gets it and they can't put it in the end zone a second time. You, you end up coming out in pretty good shape. Watson Brown, Jackie Sherrill's offensive coordinator and quarterback coach talking things over with Greg Plump. Brown, of course, the former Vanderbilt head coach. State still has two timeouts remaining. Bulldogs have all three of theirs. Had Joe Lee Dunn busy on their sideline a moment ago. He, his defense really has played well, covering up for those four turnovers by the offense today. Let's get a quick update from the sideline and Bob Kessler. They think they had the game clock problem fixed. It's working right now, but they have been keeping it on the field. The umpires been keeping it. So neither team's gaining an advantage over the play clock, but they hope it's going to work the rest of the way. Rump with time. Right side, ball tipped and almost picked up. And again, right in the middle of everything, Johnny Dixon. He has really been roaming around making things happen today. Now there's Danny Boyd, who was on the man-to-man -man coverage of the receiver. Johnny Dixon does a good job. He just, you know, just drops back, floats back in that in, in the zone, looking for the ball, and comes underneath and is able to tip the football. Almost, uh, almost intercepted again, Bob. Willie Harris, the intended receiver, second down at the 23. This one is caught by Truett. He's inside the 15. Johnny Dixon takes him down. The clock runs down to 25 seconds to go. And the Bulldogs stop it again. Mississippi State comes out. Three receivers to the left side. And they just bring a receiver all the way across the field. Trying to get him open underneath. You hit him with the football. And hopefully he can break a tackle and get downfield. Maybe get inside the 10. But uh, nothing doing here. First down. That's Orlando Truett, the 6'1 junior from Birmingham, Alabama. Parker High School, he was an All-Stater there, went to Pitt. Caught 68 balls there in the 1990 season. Didn't play after transferring last year. And this year, he's been an outstanding receiver for the Bulldogs. Second in catches and yardage to Willie Harris. You know, Bob, the thing that uh, if you're Mississippi State and Watson Brown, you may want to look at perhaps a quarterback draw with Greg Plump because Ole Miss is coming in with five and... Uh, five defensive backs and they're dropping the inside linebackers deep to get underneath and Watson Brown I'm sure has talked to Greg Plump about all the defensive backs that are in the game right now. Ole Miss employing five defensive backs trying to take away the receiver. Orlando Truitt's caught four balls today for 69 yards. 25 seconds to go. First down at the Ole Miss 13. Bulldogs lead the Rebels 10-7 with a timeout remaining. Plump looking left, blindsided, loose ball, but it falls right in the middle of the secondary. Danny Boyd didn't have a chance to pick it off, but Dwayne Dotson was the guy all over Greg Plump, and the Bulldogs are lucky they didn't have a turnover there. Greg Plump just did, did not see him coming that time. Dotson was able to get in there and put some pressure on, uh, on Plump and interrupt his motion. Watch him come off the side. Nobody hit him. He's just coming down the line of scrimmage and really gets in and delivers a blow to Greg Plump. Ball right up over the head of Chad Brown, 88, and in front of Danny Boyd, but Dwayne Dotson, the difference maker there. Second down and 10. Plump looking outside left, buries the ball into the turf, short of Orlando Truett, and Lynn Ross, the right inside linebacker, the man who tipped that pass. Hey, Ole Miss doing a good job now getting some pressure on Plump. They're just bringing people off the corner and just running people through the middle, putting some pressure on them. Here, here it comes. The defense is coming up the middle. Here's the, up the outside. Tip the ball. Good defensive play. Get the hands up when the pass is in. The, when the quarterback's getting ready to throw the pass. One for seven. Mississippi State on third down today. That's a great tribute to the Ole Miss defense. Third down and ten. Here they come. Almost getting to Plump. Now they do. Ball is loose. Picked up. Artis Ford running with it. And 
In the final 10 seconds of the half, the Rebels have stripped the ball away from the Bulldogs. Big play by Ford. Artis Ford does a good job, puts pressure, pressure on the quarterback, then reaches out and slaps the football away. Just a good defensive play, and the big guy picks it up, and, uh, you know, for some reason, Bobby just knew he was not going to take it all the way. Here we go. Ford comes off the block. Bump tries to avoid him, and Ford is able to get his hand out, knock the ball loose, oh, picks it up here, and I tell you, this guy's headed to the end zone. Oh, Greg, I thought he was gone right there. Well, that was, <laughs> I tell you, those big linemen, when they get the ball, he's probably looking around for a little defensive back to hand that thing off to. Didn't take long for them to catch up with Artis, who goes 6'3", 275. There's the turnover situation. Eight of them today, five by the home team. Bump just, he was just trying to make a play that time, but had the ball swinging out away from his body. And the defensive guy was able to reach out and slap him down. Ole Miss has called a timeout now, trying to figure out what to do with eight seconds to go. Watch Ford here. He comes off the block, and that's Plump. He just tries to dodge him, and Ford gets his hand on the ball and picks it up. And, Bob, he's running. Now, he's looking around. He's saying, where's the defensive back? <laughs> That's right. He's going to go over to the sideline when he gets through celebrating and get get on those defensive backs saying, listen, guys, you know, come take this ball out of my hand. I've done my part. Well, he's saying to him, if I'm quick enough to take the ball away, you should be quick enough to be there for him. That's right. And his other defensive line friends will tell him, look, the DBs just couldn't catch up with you. It's that speed. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of speed, the fleet-footed Bob Kessling is on the sidelines today, and he'll be coming your way with halftime information. Scores from around the country. Not that many ball games on this 28th of November. His usual look around the SEC as we wind down the season and look ahead to the championship game next week. Wide receivers everywhere for the Rebels. Rush Owls with a deep drop. He will air it out down the middle. And it is picked off at the 21-yard line. Scott Gamina with it. His first interception of the year. And uh, I guess it's only appropriate that with a turnover, the first half would come to an end. Just the uh, last play of the game, what do you do? You just drop back and throw the ball as far as you can. There you go, Miss has two receivers from each side running down the football field, and Shiles is just going to drop back and throw this one as far as he can, but Camina's waiting for the ball to come down, intercepts it. First half is over. Let's get down to the field. Jackie Shero with Bob Kessling. Coach Wild half. Game of turnovers. Huh? Well, it was. No question about it. And I think that uh, the biggest thing that we, yeah, both of us, have got to hold on to the football. And we do. I, you know, defensive teams playing well. Offense, we're going to have to run the football better or, or we're going to be a little trouble. It's not the weather. It's just the hard hitting out there. There's two teams going after each other. Coach, thanks a lot. Good Thank you. Jackie Sherrill, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, his thoughts on this first half. His Bulldogs go to the locker room leading the Ole Miss Rebels. We'll continue on our halftime activities from Oxford in just a moment. The SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Stability is just one of our benefits. And by New 29 and 29 light. Cold aid at 29 degrees to seal in smoothness. Here's 30 to 6. Of course, both Ole Miss and Mississippi State are heading to bowl games. The Rebels headed to the Liberty Bowl, and Reggie Barnes, the past president of Liberty Bowl, joins us. You're excited about having the Rebels coming up the interstate, aren't you? We're real excited. Uh, Bob, I tell you, Ole Miss always brings a lot of people to Memphis. I think their fans enjoy coming to Memphis, and they're going to play a great team in the Air Force Academy on uh, December the 31st. We're going to have a New Year's Eve party in Memphis. And Bill Street will be jumping on it. Bill Street will be rocking. The uh, hotels and motels will be full, and uh, we'll have a great time in Memphis, Tennessee. And, of course, Mississippi State's going to the Peach Bowl. Neil Cameron is with us, the chairman of the Peach Bowl. I guess you're very excited to have the Bulldogs coming down to Atlanta. Absolutely. A terrific football team. We're seeing a great game today. Of course, we'd like to see them come 8-3, and three, beat Ole Miss today, and play University of North Carolina, who has finished at 8-3. and three. And we're going to play the first major college football game in the Georgia Dome, the 25th anniversary edition, and it's going to be a big weekend in Atlanta. And this is exactly the two teams you really wanted to have. It'll bring a lot of excitement, won't it? Oh, absolutely. We know Mississippi State will bring a lot of people. They did last year to the Liberty Bowl. North Carolina hadn't been bowling in a while, and they love to come to Atlanta. So we're going to fill it up, 70,000 in Atlanta. There are tickets available for both of the games, the Liberty Bowl and also the Peach Bowl. If you'd like to call for information, 249-6400. 
or the Liberty Bowl, Ole Miss against Air Force, 901-767-7700. Both Mississippi State and Ole Miss go on to bowl games. We'll continue at halftime after a word from Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and a word from your local station. Defense, he now owns the Florida record for career interceptions. So the Gators offense and defense hopes to combine to put up another championship banner at Florida Field. Next week, the Gators get the chance as Florida takes on the Alabama Crimson Tide in the first ever SEC championship, December the 5th at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. That, that'll be a hot ticket next week. It was a hot ticket today. Mississippi State and Ole Miss at halftime, and we'll continue at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. Vanderbilt Stadium. Let's go back upstairs now to Greg and Bob Carpenter. All right, Bob, thank you very much. And Greg Bowser, some things happening in the first half that you could never, ever anticipate, even before a crazy game like this. Not at all, Bob. We talked about college rivalry, but I tell you what, uh, this was unbelievable, some of the things happened in the first half. Well, there was no scoring in the first quarter as the teams exchanged the football many times, but the field position war went to Mississippi State. After a turnover, Michael Davis went in from seven yards out, only two minutes and 20 seconds into the second quarter. Good job by Davis. He just started one way, cut the ball back, got some good blocking on the backside from his offensive line. Touchdown, Mississippi State. And the uh, Bulldogs really should have had another touchdown. They settled for a Chris Gardner 22-yard field goal at the 820 mark, and they let it by a score of 10 nothing. But then after, yeah, a turnover, Marvin Courtney caught a seven-yard pass from Russ Shiles to get the Bulldogs on the board, or rather the Rebels on the board. Russ Shiles does a good job faking inside. Like he can do the option, drops back, and uh, Courtney is wide open for the touchdown. They made it look easy. It wasn't easy for them offensively, though, in the first half. First down, Bulldogs had the edge, but not much rushing by either team. The passing yardage, Shows uh, piled some up late. Time of possession went the way of the visiting team, and they, of course, won the field goal race as the and uh, the field position race as the first half went on. Turnovers were a big factor. Those are our Ford halftime stats, and we've got the second half coming up in a moment. The Bulldogs lead the Rebels 10-7. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC football is brought to you by Lowe's, helping add value to your home. By Shoney's Breakfast Bar, the best breakfast in town. By Buick and your Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. 10-7 game as we head for the third quarter very quickly in the field. Here's Bob Kessling with Billy Brewer. Coach, give us your thoughts on the first half and what do you got to do in the second after win? Well, you know, we turned the ball over six times in the first half. We're only down three points. This is crazy things. They missed a field goal. We get a penalty. They score seven. And it's been a, we've had our opportunities, but we quit doing the things that uh, they were detrimental to us in the first half. We'll win this football game in the second half. Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Billy Brewer. Billy Brewer's team and Jackie Sherrill's team decided to come back onto the field together just a few minutes ago. We had a camera right down the middle of it, and the officials and coaches, including Jackie Sherrill, trying to separate the two football teams. Not really a fight, but a lot of arguing going on. Well, you get them together, and they weren't discussed the first half. <laughs> two teams together decided to talk it over, and, uh, uh, you know, a little bit before they go out to play the second half. Ole Miss will kick the ball. Mississippi State. There's the walkway where they came through. They just decided to come together. And then they really came together verbally. A little jousting, nothing much else. Brian Lee will kick it off for the Rebels. No thoughts whatsoever on what this second half might bring after we saw in the first after what we saw in the first 30 minutes today. A wild first half turnovers and missed opportunities by both teams and uh, this is still quite a game at seven to ten. No misses trailing now and uh, we'll just see what happens. I'm sure that uh, both coaches got after them pretty good at halftime and said let's hang on to the football. This one twisting to the far side. Tony James inside his five yard line. The ball gets out of bounds right near the pylon. But Tony James again, another 
Another error by this young man. He thought the ball was going to go out of bounds through the end zone, but looks like it bounces out just inside the pylon, so it'll be right at the one-inch line. Tony James is just, uh, you know, so we got it on replay here. He just watches the ball bounce. It takes a weird hop on him, hits him, and then it just kind of skips right on inside the pylon for just gets in there and goes out at about the one-inch line. You know, if the ball had gone through the end zone, it would have been a muff, and they would have got it at the first plug on the first uh, first down at the 20 for Mississippi State. Quarterback keeper. Very club. Start by the middle of the old Miss line. They'll have a second and long in the shadow of their own goalposts. And, hey, Bob Kessling, did you get any swings in down there? I was ducking, I'll tell you that much. One of the problems they have is the Mississippi State locker room is right over there, and Ole Miss is right here. So both teams, if you see, have to come down those steps. So when you get a heated rivalry like that, both teams are trying to come on the field at the same spot. That's what happens. Sometimes the emotions get the best of the players. But luckily, both coaches, especially Jackie Sherrill, stepped in and got them separated quickly. At the one-yard line, it's Plum keeping again. On a crazy turnover day like today, not even wanting to risk a handoff. They'd be happy to get that ball out to about the five-yard line and kick it away. Bob, you know, they've got to get the ball out. I think that uh, at some point, you know, they, they may want to consider throwing here on this down just to just to loosen it up a little bit and not force their punter to have to punt the ball. If he has to punt from here, he doesn't have uh, a whole lot of room between him and the line of scrimmage, and we may see Ole Miss come after him. That's why I said the five, because that would give them 15 yards to the back of the end zone. A normal punt snap covers about 14 yards. Third down and nine. Play action. Out to the left side. Wobbly ball. Caught by Truett over the 20-yard line. That's Dwayne Amos on the coverage, but a huge passing play on third down for Mississippi State. Well, I'll tell you, that's what Mississippi State needed is just a little fake inside and Plum drops back the throw, but he gets pressure and gets the ball out of there anyway. Just kind of hangs up there. He was pressured by Lynn Ross, but he makes the throw and uh, first down. Take another look at it, and he just comes down the line of scrimmage, and there's the pressure. Boy, he just barely gets that ball out of there and uh, got the completion for Mississippi State. Olanda Truett with a big day, his fifth catch. And that gives Michael Davis, actually listed at fullback ahead of William Prince and Carl Williamson. Williamson, the starter just a couple of weeks ago when we checked out the Bulldogs at home against Arkansas. But Davis, the sophomore out of Morton, Mississippi, is now the man who gets the call at fullback. Kenny Roberts at the other back. Second down and eight at the 25. Roberts and McCreary both shifting. Play clock down to one. They just got it off. Option right side. And that is Fred McCreary. He's out over the 33, maybe the 34-yard line. Looks to be enough for a first down. McCreary's a sophomore out of Naples, Florida. That time, Plump just took, he took all the time on the play clock and got the playoff, pitched the ball quickly, and he just got it outside. May have a first down. They're calling it first down, Mississippi State. Good job of uh, execution and changing the play at the line of scrimmage by State. They've moved on this drive, 33 yards out to their 34. Randy Brown skirting his way through. Brown, a redshirt freshman who backs up Kenny Roberts at running back. Wayne Dotson with his fourth stop of the day. Okay, this is this is a play that Mississippi State wants to pick up some more yards on second down and not get caught in third down and long again. Give the, that'll give the old Miss defense an opportunity to really come after him. Gain of three, second down and seven. Roberts and McCurry shifting again. And it's Roberts angling off the right side. It looked as if he tried to cut it upfield. There's a big divot between the 36 and 37 yard line, and he lost his footing. Good play by the Ole Miss defense. That time, Mississippi State ran right into it. Watch Abdul. He comes up to the line of scrimmage and gets down as a, as a nose guard here. 
and just plays from there. Gets off the gets off the block and is able to get in on the tackle. Third down and five. Plump will drop and look left side, and he will be sacked. Lynn Ross got him back at the 32-yard line. Ross that time came right up the middle, right up the middle to make the, make the tackle, take a look at it. He lines up, comes right up the middle, hesitates, comes up the middle, and he's got the sack. Good job, good defensive play. Third sack of the day by the Rebels. Lynn Ross, fifth sack of the year. And the kicking situation coming up for the Bulldogs. Mississippi State kicking. Ole Miss should have good field position here. A twisting spiral taken by Khan at his 32. Gets away to the near side. And he is smothered at the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. Every time you see a play like that in this game, you almost expect the fumble. But he held on. And the Rebels are in business down by just three. We're a second short of five minutes into the second half. into the third quarter of play. Bob Carpenter, Greg Bowser, Bob Kessling from Oxford, and the Bulldogs, the home team. Excuse me, the visitors set up defensively as the Rebels have it. So much happening on that play. A little right side off tackle carry. The Rebels are just trying that inside uh, run, trying to get some movement inside against that defensive line. And had a little bit there, picked up about three yards. They'll bring up a second and seven. Marvin Courtney, the fullback on the carry. He's been most effective catching the football today, including a touchdown grab. Second down and seven. Charles faking again. He'll option right and keep across midfield. Down to the 46-yard line of Mississippi State before Arlie Gibson pulled him down. That will be a Rebel first down. As Russ Shiles, good job, just fakes to the fullback, comes out on the option. Nobody takes the quarterback, and he cuts it up, picks up the first down. Good job of running the option by Shiles. Uh, watch him as he comes right toward you, reverses out. Here he comes. Nobody's there. Fakes the pitch and just goes right up the seam, picks up the first down. This time the first man threw, and the Bulldogs do a nice job. Piling things up on Marvin Courtney this time. Mark Woodard, right outside linebacker. Daniel Boyd, who plays in the middle on the left side. Mississippi State beat the beaten up Rebels last year, 24-9 in Starkville. All year long, the Rebels have been waiting to get this game on campus. First time they played here since 1972. Trailed all the way, but they're right in the ball game, down by just a field goal. And second and nine, Charles with play action, takes a hit as he releases, and the ball is incomplete down around the first down marker. Intended at the 36-yard line for Jermaine Kahn. Hey, Shiles is, uh, you know, had a little time to throw the ball, but was unable to hit his receiver. He's now 7 of 16 for, you know, he's got one touchdown, but he's got two interceptions, and that's the big thing. He's got those interceptions, and he's got to keep those down and complete those kind of passes when he tries to throw it out in the flat to his wide out. Now he's in the third place. the third and nine. He started this drive with good field position. Ball in motion. Jowers looking that way, swings it to his back. Full pot over the 40, and he is bumped out of bounds short of the first down. Good coverage by the Bulldogs. Edward Williams came up from the left corner to make that play. And you can hear the letter O being hollered all over the field. That's the second half of the word go. They want him to go for it. You know, it's a good pass by Shiles. What he has to do is lead that tailback a little bit, just throw it out in front of him. So he's got his momentum going up the field. That'll give him a chance to get the first down. But he's going to be just short. And uh, Coach Brewer says, no, he thinks he's going to punt it away. Mississippi State, on the other hand, Bob and Shore will be in a, a punt safe situation watching for any fakes. 
Scott Gamina is back there for the return. Standing at his own 10-yard line for the left-footed kick of Richard Chisholm. Chisholm spirals it. Inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. So Mississippi State will be deep in its own territory again, leading 10-7, and we'll be back after we pause for a word from your local stations. As you are. Mississippi State gets the ball back for the third time this half. They've been at their 1, and now they're 9. On first down, option left side, we have a flag on the play. As Michael Davis carried it out over the 10-yard line for a gain of a couple. A game filled with turnovers, mental mistakes, and penalties. Stopping the play. Going to be against uh, Mississippi State. Uh, false start, illegal procedure, and it's going to cost them half the distance to the goal. Cheryl's team penalized four times for 20 yards today. Really the biggest penalty of this game, though, when Ole Miss had stopped Mississippi State in the first half, got a personal foul on a fourth down play, and they paid for it. But they haven't paid for it as dearly as they should have. If the Bulldogs lose this game, Jackie Sherrill and his staff will look at that first half film, and they will just about cringe at the opportunities they passed up. Michael Davis, the ball carrier, angling near side. Cassius Ware with his fourth stop of the day. He also has a sack. We're just about halfway through the third quarter of play. No scoring yet in the second half. Michael Davis, a five-yard run in the second quarter. Chris Gardner field goal made it 10 nothing with 8.20 to go in the first half. And then Marvin Courtney, a seven-yard pass from Rush Chows. And that's the score the way it's been ever since. About second and uh, 14. Not a, not a good time for a pass here if you're Mississippi State. They've been successful at getting the ball out on a pass. They'll keep it on the ground. Roberts the ball carrier. And he was corralled by Cassius Ware. Ware a 6 foot 240 Juco transfer. Played at Northwest Mississippi Community College last year for Bobby Ray Franklin, an Ole Miss quarterback back in the 50s. And he's come on strong in his junior year. Mississippi State, two out of ten on third down today. They threw last time third down deep in their own territory. Rebels showing blitz. Draw play, forget it. Down around the two-yard line. So with that blitz coming, the Bulldogs kept it conservative. Michael Lowry got there. Dwayne Dotson does a little dance around the goal line after helping out on that tackle for a loss. That time Greg Klopp saw that he saw the, the blitz coming and wanted to make an adjustment, trying to get a trying to run the draw just to sneak that ball back through the blitz and linebackers and defensive linemen. But uh, Dotson and these other fellows will not have any part of it. At the rear of the end zone is Todd Jordan, who's averaging 40 yards on five kicks. Rebel should come out of this with great field position. Jermaine Khan at the 40-yard line of Ole Miss. Nice spiral, sends him back to the 44. He'll take a hit, back up a bit, and now he'll get down to the 41, maybe the 40. A rather tense but nice return by Jermaine Kahn, and the Rebels are right in business in Bulldog territory. Good field position for the Ole Miss offense. They're about 40 yards away from taking the lead in this game. All they got to do is take their time and put it in the end zone. If you're Mississippi State, you just have to toughen up defensively. You've had ba bad field position the, uh, this whole third quarter, so you know, you're playing the, playing the football game with your half of the field. Great fans here today. This is as good an atmosphere as we've been a part of for any SEC game all season. They have really been in this one right from the opening kickoff. And dumping the ball away was Rush Shouse toward the sideline. He was intending the ball for Marvin Courtney at the last minute. Walt Harris was pressuring the quarterback. And then on top of that, the Bulldogs had good coverage out there. Rush Howes is now 8 for 18, only 32 yards, a couple of interceptions, one touchdown. And he's almost had a couple others picked off, but uh, Mississippi State just wasn't able to bring him in, and that was one of them. On 
second and ten. Phil Potts straight ahead. Corey will get down to the 37. We talked earlier about Everett Lindsay moving from tackle to guard today. Watch number 64. He does a good job, just kind of bumps the guy and gets some room in there. Good job by Everett Lindsay. Picks up another man, picks up mile 62 trying to come across. He's a North Carolina guy out of Raleigh. All-American last year, All-SEC, his third year as a starter. And he will play in the NFL. Small in motion, far side. On third and seven. Chow's rolling, dumps it ahead. Bill Pop, he's got the first down. They've had some other plays to their backs today when the backs didn't have much momentum when catching the ball, but that time Corey Philpott was moving forward in full stride. Good job of Shiles. Just gets the ball out in front of him. Let him run. There he goes. Gets the ball out in front of him. He's able to keep running downhill. Picks up the first down. Rebels have their sixth first down. They move it from the 29 of MSU with 440 to go. Third quarter. Maybe a half yard there. Arlie Gibson there to say hello. Good job by Arlie Gibson of taking away the dive on the option. Take that fullback coming inside. You stop him and you've got uh, the first part of the option defense. Arlie Gibson, a great story. He was involved in an early summer car accident last year. It left his father, Charlie, with brain damage. And he, of course, is unable to function. But Arlie holds out hope that his dad will make it. Unable to enjoy his career fully because of that. And knifing in there is Keevan Henry to take care of Rush Yow's. Good shot, good job that time of just uh, the defense just playing tough on the front side and then getting pressure from the back side and able to make the tackle. Yeah, there's Arlie Gibson. One of the great human interest stories of this college football season based on what happened last year and visits his father often. And now we'll see if some of those Bulldogs can visit the Rebels on third down and 11 at the 30. A big play in the game to this point. Eddie Small was motioning near side. He cuts outside. He's got it inside the 20. How did he ever see that ball, much less catch it? The ball was in the air before he made his cut. And somehow through traffic, Rush Shows weaved it through there. Good job by Small. Watch him just, you know, he's lined up out here. Man coverage. Fights to try to get open. And there's number four. He just runs inside the 20, curls up. Ball's a little behind him, but he reaches back there and pulls the football in. As a junior from Jacksonville, Florida. First down at the 17. Small moving to the far side. They give it to Phil Pot. He's inside the 15, down to the 12. Even Henry with his fourth stop. But it's the Bulldogs backing up toward their end zone now as the Rebels keep moving straight ahead. Mississippi, the thing you want to do on defense is you want to make sure you've got everybody taken care of. Don't let that fullback hit in there. And if, you, if you're too much in a hurry to get outside, the fullback will run right by you with the football. No point of averaging five yards of carry today. We have a flag on the play as Juan Long was the man encroaching on the line of scrimmage. Just a little bit in a hurry to get inside on the blitz there, and they caught him off sides. That'll be five yards, and uh, the first and goal, I believe, are first and, uh, and ten just inside, just outside the ten-yard line for uh, Ole Miss. Bob, coming into the game, we talked about uh, Phil Pot and his running, but I tell you, the thing that Ole Miss has tried to do is they've tried to establish the fullback inside with Courtney trying to get some room in there. He's uh, Mississippi State overall have been able to stop them, but it's a big mistake here by State. It's been a game of mistakes, a game of turnovers. This will move the ball down inside the seven yard line. It'll be first and goal from there. A lot 
of Mississippi State fans at that south end of the end zone cheering for their defense. We'll see if they can come up big like Ole Miss has done so many times defensively today. Bill Pop, right side, touchdown! They opened up a huge hole for him, and the Rebels take the lead for the first time today. Good job of blocking up front by Ole Miss. That offensive line, they pull the guard and tackle around, and Phil Pott goes in untouched for the touchdown. Just a good job up front. Those big guys up front finally got a hole, and Phil Pott hit it running. You can't give that guy any room. He'll just go right through. Watch it on the replay. Just take it back to him. He starts one way, cuts it back. There's the hole. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. Corey Philpott, his third running touchdown of the year. The point after is perfect from Brian Lee. And with two minutes to go in the third quarter of play, Philpott with a big hole puts the Rebels on top of the Bulldogs. Corey Philpott now has 11 rushes, 59 yards, six of them on the touchdown run to put the Rebels on top. Good job of running and blocking. Gets the ball, cuts it back, sees the hole. Touchdown. I tell you, the Mississippi State defensive line from the backside did not close down. You've got to get that linebacker coming down inside to cut it off. They did not get him coming inside. Here it is. Watch it. Everybody's running to the front side. Linebacker over pursues, cuts it back. Touchdown. That's what you do when you take the ball right at him and then bring it back against a team that's really quick and runs to the ball like Mississippi State does. Now we focus in on another record, another set of numbers. Tony James needs 11 yards in return. He's got 44 on the day. He needs 12, actually, to be the new NCAA career leader. But this one will be at the six-yard line, angling out over the 20, the 30, the 40, far sideline. And there's your record. Tony James got the 11 and a whole lot more. No flags. And that changes the complexion of things all of a sudden. He has surpassed Steve Odom of Utah, who had held the national record of 3,130 kick return yards. Good job by Tony James. He gets the ball and got a good block inside. Now it's just a foot race. The guy was able to get over there to him and just bump him out of bounds. All the way out at the 48-yard line after a 44-yard return. He has 88 return yards today. Just when you think one team is grabbing the momentum in this game, something else happens. First man through, angling off the left side, Michael Davis on the carry. You know, Billy Brewer thought that the key matchup today was his offensive line against the defensive front of Mississippi State. I'd have to say on that touchdown run, the matchup was to his liking very much. Absolutely. He got what he what he really wanted. He wanted man-on-man -man blocking, wanted him to get good ahead on people. And his offense was able to do that. Pull back, the tailback saw the hole and cut it back from the touchdown. I'm a little surprised, though, they kicked the ball to James right after scoring the go-ahead touchdown. I tell you, you know, James had trouble feeling the ball so far in this game, but that time he came back and uh, exploded for 44 yards. And second and six, plump dumping it off. It is incomplete down inside the 35-yard line. Olanda Truitt, the intended receiver. Corey Philpott and company. Really happy over on that near sideline, but there's a lot of football yet to be played in this one. I'll tell you what, Len Ross does a good job of coming through the line, and he's almost there and just barely quarterback just gets the ball off right before he takes it down. But I tell you, if Len Ross and the rest of the defense keep that kind of pressure on the quarterback, Mississippi State will have a tough time completing the passes here. Bulldogs only two of 11 on third down today as they set up on third and six. Here come the Rebels, but they're stopped. Little swing pass incomplete. They were looking for Randy Brown on the right side. Good job of picking up the blitz by the offensive line, but they just, uh, the quarterback just could not hang on and, and complete the pass. Both linebackers are coming inside the offensive line. Good job of picking them up. Pump just doesn't hit his receiver. Bad throw. Yeah, if you pick up a blitz like that, you should be able to complete that short pass pretty easily. Todd Jordan will kick it for the seventh time today. Jermaine Kahn standing at his own 10. A low line drive. Kahn will take it at the 15. 
He'll reverse his field. Carrying that ball right down around his shoe tops, and he gets back to about the 18-yard line. I'll tell you, when he gets the, when he gets the ball in his hand, that, you got to take a deep breath. I'm sure Billy Brewer is wondering what's going on. You know, if I'm if I'm a special teams coach, I'm about to say everybody fair catch it today. Don't do anything, <laughs> just fair catch it. Well, he's carrying the ball a little loose there, and uh, the Mississippi State folks, you know, they see that they're trying to get that football. He just then covers it up and doesn't fumble the ball. I'm sure Billy Brewer will have a talk with him about where, he where he's carrying the football. At the 19, first down for the Rebels with 50 seconds to go before we head for the fourth quarter. And a dive into the line, Corey Philpott. He's around 54 yards away from 1,000 for the year. He'll have a chance to maybe go over that in the bowl game if he doesn't do it today. The Rebels are headed for the New Year's Eve Liberty Bowl up in Memphis against Air Force. The day after New Year's Day, Mississippi State is headed for the Peach Bowl against North Carolina in the Georgia Dome. Second and nine. Hit by again. Ooh, what a collision. Daniel Boyd right there to meet him. Keevan Henry was a part of that as well. I tell you, Philpott gets the ball, but the, the linebackers are waiting for him, and they just they know exactly where he's going. Watch, watch Boyd on this one. He reads it, reads it, reads it, and then just goes right after him. There he is. We got him. That's the end of the third quarter with a huge ouch. We'll send it to the fourth. Ole Miss has taken the lead 14-10. The Rebels have the football. On to the fourth quarter we go. A third and six facing Ole Miss on the previous play. Daniel Boyd hitting Corey Philpott. Listen. Oh. And then you can hear the crowd go, ooh. As we did up here. Third down. Shaw's dropping and rolling. Left side. He's got a man over the 30. And getting loose is Eddie Small. Pushed out of bounds by Kelvin Knight in Mississippi State Territory. Good job by Eddie Small. Taking the catch and then breaking the tackle. Charles wants to roll out here. He stops and he's getting some pressure from the backside, but he gets the ball off. Now Small takes a hit and he breaks that, keeps his balance and goes down the sideline. One guy to beat, can't quite get there. Pushes him out of bounds and uh, it's going to be first down for Ole Miss. Eddie Small up over 60 catches, over 900 yards in his career. That was a 30-yard play. Look at that 39 yards rushing by Mississippi State. They averaged 204. That may be the big stat of this game. Corey Philpott inside the 40. Just a simple handoff to the tailback with the fullback leading in there. Good job by the offensive line, opening up the hole. Right at him, hit Ed, Edwards Williams has to make the tackle. There's Phil Pot handed off, and he's going up the middle, he's heading in on the thousand yards. There he is. There's a senior from Florida, Corey Phil Pot. He's getting close to the thousand yard mark. 14 carries, 74 yards today. Courtney, the fullback, and he's got some yardage. This offensive line of Billy Brewers, offensive coordinator Larry Beckish. Boy, they've got to be ecstatic with the way their line is playing right now. They had to move Sebastian Williams over from defense to play left tackle. They moved Everett Lindsay over to left guard. Joel Jordan playing with a broken hand, playing right guard. Daryl Monkus and Clint Conley, a redshirt freshman and a junior at center and right tackle. Mark Smith is in the ball game for Ole Miss. We were told that if he gets in there, he's at that right slot position. We might see a little razzle-dazzle flea flicker today. He's the guy facing the quarterback. He blocks, though, as Courtney carries it. And they will move the chains again down inside the 25-yard line. Hey, that time Rush Shouse just came to the line of scrimmage and just changed the play. He saw something in the Mississippi defense, that Mississippi State defense, that made him just change the play, and uh, he did. He was able to pick up his first down. Bob, if you run any type of option and you're able to run the fullback successfully inside, be able to handle the tailback, and even run the option when you want to, 
you can really uh, cause problems for defense. 13.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss on the move. First down at the Bulldog. 24. Quarterback optioning left side. He'll keep it. And Shaw's down just across the 20 yard line. Let's get a sideline update about Joel Jordan and that uh, beat up Ole Miss offensive line. Bob Kessling. You know, Joel Jordan is a guy who's been a valuable backup for the Rebels. Now he's been pressed into service. If you notice, his right hand heavily wrapped because of the broken bone. And on that wrap, he has read the number 69 for James Holcomb and 79, Wesley Melton. Two of the offensive linemen not playing. And, of course, also 38 in memory of Chucky Mullins. Second down and five. Holcomb hurt. Milton has cancer. The no longer play. Corey Philpott can. And he's down around the 10, 11 yard line, and that will move the chains again. Ole Miss with unbelievable momentum in the early stages of the fourth quarter. And I tell you, the guy we just talked about, Jordan, there he goes. Good block on the inside of the defensive lineman, opens the hole, and Phil Potts just runs right in there behind him. That guy just keeps going, closing in on that 1,000 yard mark. He needed, 100 and, he needed 113 yards at the beginning of the game. He's getting close, Bob. 15 rushes, 81 yards. He needs 113 today. First down at the 11. Eddie Small motions near side. Courtney, the fullback, and he's not about to fumble. He was hugging that ball like it was a bag full of $100 bills. He's down to the 10 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, you got to hang on to the ball, Bob. This is college football. You have to hang on to the football. He had both arms wrapped around that thing, and he didn't care who hit him. He said, I'm just going to get it to the middle of the field, and we'll give it a try on second and nine. Second and nine. He wants to get in the end zone. You know, Ole Miss can't pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown here. Quarterback option. That's side. Off a hit, and he'll get out of bounds down around the five and a half yard line. It looked like they were going to hammer him at about the nine, and Corey, with good momentum, kept it going. Edward Williamson there to meet him. And the key on this play: watch the defensive lineman. He's got somebody on him. He's got the guard, but he pushes him upfield, forces the quarterback to pitch the ball deep in the backfield, a chance for the defense to get there. But Phil Pot does a good job of picking up three, four yards after he's made, after the initial hit. Now he needs about 27 yards to go over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Big play coming up. Third down and four. Just outside the five-yard line. Waterback has it. And as he turns the corner, Rush Shaw's trips. He had a pitch man out there. Stopped at the five. That's going to bring up a third down and a box. Mark Smith was the man trailing the play on the corner. Watch him, number 41. Good and Shouse cuts it up. There goes the feet. There goes the feet and just down. It brings up a fourth down and about four. Good choice here. Just line up and kick the, kick the field goal. It makes it 17-10. Uh, a 22-yard attempt coming up. Brian Lee. He's only three out of six under 30 this year, though. He gets it inside that left upright. It's a seven-point Rebel lead with 10.50 to go in the football game. Bulldogs arguing the kick wasn't good. The official's opinion, the only one that matters. 10.50 to go. The field goal that snuck through off the foot of Brian Lee puts Ole Miss up 17-10. Looks like he's not going to make it, but he gets it up. Looks like it was tipped right at the line of scrimmage is what happened. Somebody got a hand on the football as it was kicked, Bob. That's why you see it wobbling away through there, and it just gets inside the upright. And he kicks off. James at the goal line. Nothing on the left side. Not much up the middle, and he will fail to get back to the 20. At the 17, the Bulldogs will take it over. Brian Lee has passed up Brian Owen as the all-time Ole Miss leading scorer. He also holds the Ole Miss field goal record with 41 career. Here's another record holder. Tony James has broken another kick return record. I think the one that would mean the most to him, though, is the yardage. That's the one he broke earlier, surpassing Steve Odom of Utah. But that's secondary right now. The Bulldogs need to do something with the football. Oh, plenty of 
time. Hits his tight end. Angling up the left side is Kurt Clinton, a senior out of Manhattan, Kansas, who played Juco ball at Coffeyville. And that's the first throw to a tight end today, his ninth catch of the year. Good job of Flop by the quarterback. Flop just taking his time. Watch him. He just takes his time. He drops back. He's looking around. He just sits back there, looks around, and gets his tight end on a little delay. Tight end's got the ball. Now he looks at that defensive back and says, well, I'll just take this guy for a ride and gets the ball upfield. Right cornerback Dwayne Amos of Ole Miss has an ankle problem. Is not in the game right now. And diving out for a couple of yards, Kenny Roberts. Good play by the Rebels. They all stayed home on that one. Yikes. The Seminoles all over the Gators. Some folks suspected this could happen. Number three, Florida State looking good. And Vanderbilt at the half at home. And Johnny Major swan song for regular season play, leading the balls by three. Second down and five. Jerry Donato's team can be tough if they move the ball on the ground and keep possession for a while. Straight ahead. Same guy, Kirk Clinton. Good job by uh, Bump that time. Again, the tight end delay was happening as Ole Miss has come out. They've got five defensive backs in the ball game, and it's allowing that tight end to just check block, then release. Watch the quarterback looks outside, nothing there, comes back to his tight end. Good throw and catch, and he just gets the first down. Great Bump, 9 of 19. He is hit. It was his arm in motion. Yes. It is an incomplete pass. That's a good call by the officials. His arm was headed forward. He is down on the turf. Lynn Ross all over Greg Plum. I tell you, he took quite a lick. Lynn Ross came right up the middle again and was able to put a lick on, on Greg Plump. Watch him. There he is. Plump rolling out. He doesn't even see him coming. And there he is. Right right underneath that uh, that arm in his ribs. What a, what a shot. That's why they invented flak jackets for quarterbacks years ago with hits like that. Watch him again. He just hides in there behind the nose guard, comes around, and just puts a lick on him, and uh, just a good defensive play that time. Well, he stepped right around Lee Ford. Lynn Ross not listed as a starter. He's the guy who backs up Dwayne Dotson. But in different situations, and there's Rodney Hudson warming up. And I tell you, the thing about Rodney Hudson, he's a freshman. You bring him in, you know, he's 0 for 1 today in pass attempts. Well, for, for Plump is 9 of 20 for 141 yards. But Hudson will see a number of blitzes coming at him now. They'll bring people from the outside, and I'm sure they'll run some folks up the middle. But they'll make him have to make some decisions with this defense out here. Ole Miss is going to come after him. That Ole Miss defense, what a game they're having today. They force Plump out, Hudson in. And it's second down 10 coming up. That Ole Miss defense, they've had to patch things together a bit. They play anywhere from a two to a seven man front. Turn those linebackers loose like Lynn Ross. There's Hudson on the option. And out to get him, Cassius Ware. His seventh tackle of the day. He has a sack. Joe Lee Dunn and his staff, they take those linebackers and turn them loose. In fact, those inside guys, a lot of them just play outside now and gamble like crazy. That's what they're doing to try to string it out because the backside is running. Those guys are running to the football on defense. You see the red shirts are getting there, and there's the hit. That's what you have to do. String them out on the front side and get some help from your friends running from inside out. Third down and nine. Hudson has to lob the ball. He had people in front of him. Somebody may have gotten his arm, and the ball never got to Orlando Truett. And the Bulldogs will have to kick it with 8.36 to go. 8.36 to go in the game in Mississippi State, enjoying a 17-10, I'm sorry, Ole Miss, 17-10 lead. We'll see a lot of show of Phil Cox handling the football. Back to receive the kick, Jermaine Kahn. Jordan's eighth kick of the day. Wobbles it down to the eight-yard line and taking no chances. Khan takes the fair catch. 8.29 to go. Mississippi State's quarterback, Greg Plump, headed for the locker room. Ole Miss has it when we come back. At free. 
Ole Miss by seven, 8.29 to go. There's Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator for the Rebels, against a Mississippi State offense that averages 204 yards a game on the ground today, 33 carries, 44 yards. On first down, Corey Philpott stopped Cole. Ron Long right there, Daniel Boyd. He got sandwiched between those inside linebackers. Good job. Good job by the linebackers. That's what you have to do is just step right in there and make the hit, Bob. That's that's good, solid play, but Mississippi State needs a turnover here. Let's get a quick sideline update. Bob Kessley. Yeah, they're taking Greg Plump, the Mississippi State quarterback, into the locker room where he was hit when he was throwing. They said the whole right side of his body is stiff. They want to get him in, warm him up so they can examine him. Doesn't look like he'll be back, though, right now. Thanks, Bob. He took a hard shot on those ribs, letting that ball go. Here's Phil Pot again. Up over the 25-yard line. He'll be out to about the 28. Walt Harris, the right corner, had to knock him down. Good he job. moves the chains, is what Billy Brewer told us about Corey Philpott, and he really moved him that time. Good job of running by Philpott. Here's the counter play. Fake to the fullback. Back to Phil Philpott the other way. Good blocking, and he's off to the races. Just, just a good job of running. Watch it here. Goes, there he is. Now he's got an opening. Watch him run. And a, he's got about 12 happened? yards to go for his 1,000-yard season. He has 101 on the ground today. There's the fullback, Courtney, trying to get outside. Pretty good job of staying with him by Mark Woodard, the right outside linebacker. That's Bill Pot. You know, and 1,000 yards is a big deal around here because one, only one other Rebel has ever done it, K.O. Dotley. 1,312 yards back in 49, 1,950 yards in 1950. So in the last 42 years, nobody's done it since. Phil Pot is on the verge. He needs seven yards. Second down and nine. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Russ threw that one away. Yeah, he just dropped back and the uh, receiver was covered. Did a good job with just throwing the ball away. No interception. He gets a chance to set him down again and uh, try to pick up his first down. That's where experience pays off, Bob, at the quarterback position. That guy didn't try to force it, just threw the ball away. He learned from that earlier pass today when he tried to force one of the first half and it was picked off. Scott Gamina got an INT today. So did Charlie Davidson on that first one. Third down and nine. He lets him come, throws the screen, and the ball is caught by Everett Lindsay after it hit off the hands of the fullback, Courtney. Mark Woodard in on the play, and he is the guy that gets up injured and limping on a very bizarre happening. Watch Everett Lindsay turn into a wide receiver. Good play. He just shouts. He's trying to throw the screen pass out there. Throws it a little high for Courtney. He tips the ball up. <laughs> and the reception is made by the big offensive lineman, Everett Lindsay. That's the first pattern I've seen this year run by a guy 6'5", 290. On fourth down, Richard Chisholm will kick it away. His sixth punt of the day. We have not seen very good kicking on this cold afternoon. And look out, Tony James. Cracked down hard at the 42-yard line. Looked like he was knocked over by Derek King. Number 66. But the Bulldogs are in good shape. But they're without their starting quarterback. They trail by 7, by 47 to go. 5.47 to go. Bulldogs have the ball back, and they have a new quarterback in there. Trailing by 7, he's the punter. But he's thrown 43 passes this year. 24 for 43 is Todd Jordan, a junior out of Tupelo. They know a lot more about his passing than they do about Rodney Hudson, who came in one of three on the year for minus six yards. Plump back on the field, evidently has the feeling back in the left side of his body or the right side after taking that hard hit. I tell you, Bob, you get into a game like this, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and uh, no one wants to sit this one out. You want to be in there playing if you can play at all and help your football team. And that's what Plump's going to do. Looks like he's coming back, grabbing his helmet. We'll probably see him again. But for now, it's Todd Jordan at the Ole Miss 41-yard line. They're blitzing. 
Jordan lets it go. It is caught but dropped out in the left flat by Orlando Truitt. He had to reach way to low and outside to get that ball. Did a nice job just to get there. I did not hold on. And Len Ross again putting pressure on uh, putting pressure on the quarterback Jordan from the inside. The thing that they've got to do, Mississippi State, that's their fifth straight incompletion. If you're going to complete that, try to complete that pass to the other side. Help your quarterback out a little bit. Roll him to the wide side of the football field. That's a long throw for a quarterback to have to make. Jordan on second down. This one is pulled down out of the 30-yard line. Willie Harris. Haven't heard much from Willie since the early stages of this game. But they've got the first down. Down at the 30. Good job. As you watch the secondary here, everybody's going to drop back and try to take away the stuff inside underneath. The quarterback rolls just a little bit, gives him some time to throw, and he completes the pass right in the hole in the zone. First down. That's what you've got to do with the quarterback is sprint him out a little bit, get him closer to your wide receiver. Roberts the motion man now in a slot as they work from the far hash. Draw play, Michael Davis. And he'll get decent yardage down to around the 26. Five, 20 and counting, and Greg, a very interesting situation shaping up here. Should Jackie Sherrill get the ball into the end zone, do you play for the tie, or do you go for the two points and the 18-17 lead? First things first, but it's something to file away. Jordan rifles it right in there, down around the 21-yard line. It appears to be short of a first down. Kenny Roberts, the receiver. He may have got a, gotten a good spot here, Bob. If he did, it, uh, it's going to be a first down for Mississippi State. But Jordan's doing a good job of picking up his receiver, and they're open. You know, the whole miss gives him a lot of room to work underneath, and he's taking advantage of it. Yeah, he got a good spot. They made it. It appeared he was short when he went down. So the Bulldogs will move the chains as they try to get right back in it. Down by seven with 4.50 to go. Each team, seven and three. Four and three in the Western Division of the SEC. Each headed to a bowl game. First time in 29 years that has happened. Well, now Jordan has to be careful here because Ole Miss is going to throw some things at him. They may come with a blitz and send everybody at him, try to put some pressure on him and make something happen. Jordan at the line of scrimmage checking out. Uh, he's looking at the defense close. He's got plenty of time in the play clock. Down to five now. And he gives it to the first man through, Michael Davis. Dwayne Dotson with another tackle. Big second down play here. You've got to pick up some yards. You're down here now. You want to, you want to move the ball, keep things going. And they've been, Mississippi State's been real successful with the pass. Second down. They got nothing on that play. And the guy to go to here may be the tight end backside. He's got man covered. They've gone to Clinton twice today. Jordan slips as he lets it go just a bit. And the ball is too tall for Olanda Turret. Third down play coming up. And let's get a Greg Plump update. Here's Bob Kessling. Well, the, the water of the Mississippi State quarterback is he has a partially separated left shoulder. Ooh. However, he said he wanted to come back out if the team needs him. He said he'll go back in there. They don't know whether they'll use him or not, but Plunk has a separated left shoulder but still wants to play. So what happened to him on that play, he was hit on the right side but must have fallen heavily on the left shoulder. Third down and 10. Mississippi go. State, three out of 13 on third down today. Jordan looking out toward Truett. Nobody open. Let's it go. And a great catch inside the 10 yard line. Willie Harris. Good catch and a good job by Jordan of just hanging on to the football to the last possible moment. He rolls out. They stop him. And he's looking back to see his receiver coming across the middle and just was able to get him the football. Watch this play. There's Harris. He just works across the middle. Sees his quarterback's in trouble. He's coming back to him, running, through the, running across the field. A low throw, but Harris is able to get down with his hands, get him underneath the ball, get the reception. First down inside the 10 for Mississippi State. Harris with four catches. He had four against Alabama two weeks ago. First and goal from the eight. 
First man in there, nowhere to go. Michael Davis. He might have gotten inside the seven, maybe down to the six. Clock running down inside, 3.10 to go as Jackie Sherrill faces a very interesting decision coming up if he gets it into the end zone. Well, Bob, the thing he wants to do, one, he wants to get the ball in the end zone, and two, he wants to look at the clock, make sure he doesn't score real quick, doesn't want to give a lot of time to Ole Miss. But the other thing is, now he's in a, he's in a situation where he has to try to run the ball in from here because throwing the ball is very difficult to throw this deep and beyond the bonus territory. Looking to wing it, Jordan Sack. First guy to get there, Cassius Ware. His second sack of the day. That's what happens, Bob, as I mentioned. Once you get down this close to the goal line, it creates problems for a passing offense. Jordan rolls out, he doesn't have a lot of room to work with, and the defense doesn't have a lot of room to have to defend. Therefore, they stop him short, force him to pull up, get the sack. Ole Miss has got a timeout. Fourth sack for Ole Miss today. So they've been able to put some pressure on the Mississippi State quarterbacks. And uh, Coach Brown's over, Watson Brown's over talking to Jordan. He wants to, he wants to make sure that everybody's on the same page. He's still got a chance, got to get the ball in the end zone on third and 10, third and goal. Ole Miss now has 38 quarterback sacks on the year. They got it started weeks ago when they sacked Arkansas eight times. Now their defense has played very well down the stretch. Bulldogs have used one of their remaining timeouts. Rebels have all three of theirs remaining. 2.35 to go. Headed for a photo finish here in Oxford. 17-10. Ole Miss leads Mississippi State in the regular season finale for both teams. First time the game's been on this campus since 1972. It's been worth the wait as they now will ship from Starkville to Oxford every year. I tell you, this one's been exciting. You know, you look at uh, Mississippi State, they've got uh, 57 players from the state of Mississippi. Ole Miss, 45. So, big ball game for these young. Jackie Sherrill talking about the state of Mississippi and high school talent says the top five players from this state are as good as the top five from anywhere in the country. They just don't have as many as a Florida, a Texas, and Oklahoma would have. Third down and 10 at the 10 yard line. If you're Jordan right here, you want to look for somebody shot underneath and get the ball off. Don't take the sack. You've got two downs to get the touchdown. Intercepted! Michael Lowry has it for the Rebels with 2.27 to go. And the Ole Miss defense has done it again. Well, Bob, that's the one thing he could not do was throw the interception of everything he could have done. Interception was the worst. And he just sits back and watches the secondary. They're going to take away the touchdown. They won't, they won't give you that up. He tries to go inside to his tight end. He just threw it right into the heavy coverage. He had two defenders there. Watching from behind the defense here. There's the blitz he picked up. And he tries to force the ball into the tight end, right into the hands of the defender. Interception. And that was the worst thing that could have happened to this Mississippi State team. Michael Lowry, his second interception of the year. 2.23 and counting to go. And the Bulldogs will have to spend another timeout or two right here. Marvin Courtney on that carry. Ten turnovers in the game today. None of them bigger than that as the Rebels stall the Bulldog drive. I'll tell you, for Ole Miss, what they want to do is get in and out of huddle because you want to get the ball to number 30. Give Phil Pot a chance to get those other yards to get over that 1,000-yard mark. Jackie Sherrill needs this play to run, then he'll stop it. Fumble! And the Bulldogs have it! Ball picked up by Frankie Luster. Corey Philpott was the ball carrier. The Rebels cough it up for the seventh time today. And just when it appears they had the game in their hands, the ball slipped out. Just a handoff to Philpott. He hits inside, and somebody puts a helmet on the football. It comes loose, and the Mississippi State defenders are the only ones that realize the ball's loose. Look like nose tackle Arlie Gibson, number 90, with the hit. And the ball squirted right out of there. Picked up by Luster. First and goal for the Bulldogs at the eight. Now in the game, every time Jordan's checked off, now he's giving the ball to fullback inside. Davis, the man behind him. He's looking to throw. He has to throw it away. Good well, job. And uh, Truett, the intended receiver, but 
the only thing he was thinking about was getting it out of the end zone second and eight coming up second and goal with a minute 43 to go good job you see the receivers come off the line of scrimmage here one inside receiver goes out he has a step on the defender but Jordan can't quite throw it there. What he wants to do is throw that ball for the little, the little flag, little pylon you see on the ground out there. Great plunk. Dying to get back in with a hurt left shoulder. Probably some sore ribs on that right side. On Greg Plunk would put a lot of pressure on the defense with his running ability at quarterback. Second and goal. 143 remaining in a seven-point game. Jordan. Hugging him down to the turf, Dwayne Dotson. Got a timeout here. Oh, Mississippi State's going to take a timeout, but you, know, you watch this and as you see it on, on the replay. Jordan drops back to pass. He's looking for a receiver. Sees the pressure coming, tries to step up. He just gets down, covers up the football. He doesn't want to fumble right here. Bulldogs spend their second timeout. What, a day, what another game and what a year for Dwayne Dotson, the former Tennessee volunteer out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. In fact, uh, a couple of years ago, when he was a middle linebacker for the Vols, he had a touchdown for an interception against Vanderbilt and then had an INT against Ole Miss that prevented the Rebels from winning the SEC title. Now he's wearing the red, white, and blue of Ole Miss. Third down and goal coming up from the 11. As Todd Jordan, normally the punter, third string quarterback, tries to get them into the end zone. Well, the thing Jordan has to do is third and 11. He's got two shots at it now, so uh, just don't force anything and not, you know, we don't want to throw an interception here. They're only four out of 14 on third down today. Here comes the blitz. Jordan lets it go. End zone. Incomplete, intended for the tight end, Kurt Clinton, with a last-ditch throw. And now the Bulldog chances come down to a fourth and goal from the 11. Bob, you know, the thing that the thing that Jordan's doing as we watch the replay, when he starts his drop, he does not take as deep a drop or as big a roll as Plump did. That will, if he did that, that'll give him a chance to get away from some of the, the trash in front of him and throw the football. He's not dropping as deep as he needs to, and he's not quite rolling out of that to get away from that inside rush. Nine of 14 on fourth down this year are the Bulldogs. This is not your normal fourth down play. Jordan, ball is tipped. There are flags in the end zone. Orlando Truett being guarded by Tony Collier, and it appears to be pass interference. Hey, hey. You watch it, you know, the good defensive play, but the, the defender came in just a little early, just a little early. There's the receiver, he looks like he's open. There's a pass interference call. Good call. Watch it from the ground. Good call. Good call. That makes a first down at the two-yard line, Mississippi State. And I tell you, now you can do almost anything. You've got plenty of time. Mississippi State may want to put the ball on the ground. Got to take a little time off this clock. Well, they have a timeout remaining. 17 to 10 Ole Miss. 1.23 to go. Greg Plump is back in there at quarterback. He hands it off, and cracked down short was Randy Brown. Well, I'll tell you now, if, you, if you're the defense, you have to wor worry just a little bit about Plump being back in the game because he can stick the ball in there, you know, fake it to one of his backs, pull it out on a bootleg, and maybe even run the ball. You know, he, but he's got that ability, and that's the added threat that he brings. Watch him here on this play. Just hands it off. Gets down to the one. Second and goal. And a big play defensively. Randy Brown taken down by Chad Brown. He was almost there in time for the handoff, and the Bulldogs, with 47 seconds to go, will have to use their final timeout. Watch the defense here. You see him just come across the line of scrimmage, and before you, before you get going, there's Brandon Brown. Makes the tackle for a loss and forces Mississippi State 
Chad Brown, excuse me, forced Mississippi State to have to take the timeout. Big play. 47 seconds left, Bob. And I tell you, it's a big defensive play for Ole Miss. Oh, it is huge. Joe Lee Dunn's defense today, and really, you have to say, no matter what happens here in the final 47 seconds, they could give up a touchdown right now, and you can never, ever fault them for the game they have played here today. They have been unbelievable against a Mississippi State team that is outstanding on the ground to the tune of 204 yards a game. I tell you, you had a shot of uh, that Billy Brewer walking around. He's, he's getting, he's excited about this one. I tell you, Plum's coming back to the huddle. If you're Mississippi State, you're thinking, let's try to get the ball outside with Greg Plump. We can get him rolling outside, put some pressure on that defense, get him away from the inside blitz. Third and goal from the four. No timeouts remaining for the Bulldogs. 47 seconds on the clock. Full house in the backfield. And he'll do the bootleg. At the five, maybe the six yard line, they take him down for a loss. 40 seconds to go. Johnny Dixon got there. And it'll be fourth and goal. Is it? But here's the problem on the field. Bob, the official's making a mistake here. He's giving the ball to Mr. Ole Miss, but in doing so, he stopped the clock. Yeah, that gave him at least an extra 15 seconds or so. Fourth down coming up. Plump looking into the end zone. Incomplete. Off the hands of Willie Harris. No flags. Ole Miss has held again and barring a miracle has won the football game. I tell you, what a defensive play that time. Uh, the defender was all over. Plump threw the ball just a little behind him, but Ole Miss may have dodged the bullet here. A bullet? How about a, <laughs> how about a round of bullets? Well, I'll tell you, the thing that happened, though, the, the official thought it was fourth down, thought it was Ole Miss's ball, stopped the clock, was going to reset the ball and start first down for Ole Miss, but instead he realized what was happening and it gave Mississippi State a chance to call a play. Here's Plump, rolls out, he's looking, he's got plenty of time. I think he tries just tries to force the ball here a little bit behind him. Let's see it again from this angle as he rolls, around, rolls out. He's got plenty of time. Protection's pretty good. And it looks like he just throws the ball behind him. And Jackie Sherrill just can't believe he's watching it. Almost gets it in there. Mississippi State cannot stop the clock. And Sherrill thought it was a penalty interference against Mississippi State. Rushals will kneel on the turf. That will be the last play of the game. And for the first time in 20 years, the Mississippi State Ole Miss game is played on this field. And the Rebels win it, 17 to 10. Ole Miss, after trailing most of the football game, came back and got the big plays when they needed it. Got the ball in the end zone. And uh, a strange game by Bob and Darren. Uh, Ole Miss was able to hold off a late surge by Mississippi State. How could you ever expect to turn the football over seven times and win a football game? That's the unpredictability of college football here in the SEC as Billy Brewer goes to eight and three on the year, finishes second behind Alabama. This is a team that was supposed to be the worst of the 12 in the Southeastern Conference this year. They've won eight of 11 ball games and five of eight in conference play. Victory ride for the coach. We're coming back to Oxford in a minute. The SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Lowe's. Helping add value to your home. By Buick and your Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. Well, the Ole Miss Rebels almost laid a huge egg here today by turning the football over seven times. Now they own the Golden Egg as they take it back from Mississippi State down to the field. Bob Kessling. Coach Brewer, terrific one today. Where's one of the great all-time Rebel wins? There's no question about it. We were 10 points down. We had six turnovers in the first half. It should have been 21. We gave them a chance to win it. And it was, I knew, I said the second half, if we cut that stuff out, we'll win it. 
and then we gave them eight shots from the five, and they couldn't do it. Hey, baby, that, you're talking about big man here, the big defense, my man Dwayne Dawson. I'll tell you what, the defense was terrific all day. You shut them out second half. Well, they they got some great kids out there, some great leaders, and Jolie Dunn and his staff, Dwayne Dawson, Cassius Ware, and the rest of those guys. I, I just can't say enough, but it was, uh, <clears throat> it was a, sure, certainly a, a, a tremendous win for the Ole Miss Rebels. Where does this one rank since you've been here? Well, it, it, we've had some big wins, and uh, but when you play on Arch Rival, it's the sweetest, baby. I know, this takes a pretty good momentum in the Liberty yeah, Bowl, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It takes us 8-3. and three. They've never lost right here in this stadium, and hey, we got to keep it alive. Enjoy the Egg Bowl. Thank you very much. Appreciate really? it. Dwayne Dotson, of course, one of the key men's of the Ole Miss defense. Dwayne, nice going today. Talk about the things that you knew you had to do to stop Mississippi State. Well, we knew we had to put a lot of pressure on their, um, their offense. They have a pretty good offensive um, scheme. And uh, we put a little pressure on Plump and uh, paid off for as well. And uh, after they brought in the freshman, you know, he was unable he was unable to um, make the adjustments that they needed to win. So uh, I feel like we had um, we won surely off um, determination today. I tell you what, when they you stopped them, then Ole Miss fumbles the ball right back. You had to get it up quick, didn't you? Right. Uh, I believe they tested our character then. And, uh, you know, we showed a lot of character all season. And that was just another um, exhibit of it right there. Nice going today, Dwight. All right. Appreciate it. Here's one of the touchdown scorers today, Corey. Congratulations on a huge win. Yeah, it was a great win. Like I said, you had that formal thing like that happen at the end, but I was glad that my defense could come back and hold him for getting in the end zone. You know, I owe it all to the defense. You know, I was six yards from breaking a thousand, but hey, you know, we won. Hey, that's the bottom line, Ole Miss. Talk about the fumble. They just put a helmet on the ball? Uh, well, when I was falling down, they just kind of reached their hand in and pulled the ball out. And I realized as I was on the ground that it had already came out. I thought that the ref was going to call it on the ground, but, you know, they gave it to them. So, you know, that's... Something that happened to them, but I was glad the defense came alive for yeah, them. You were the biggest cheerleader for the defense, weren't you, in the last stand? I, I was sitting over there with my hands crossed and everything. I was just telling them, get it up, guys. Let's go. We had to have it. And that's what they did. They came through. Well, you had a terrific year, and I guess this really caps it off. Yeah, this caps it off. I mean, I ended up with 100 yards against them, but hey, you know, it's great, to, it's great to play for Ole Miss, and hey, let's do it next year and let them go all the way next year. Rebels. Very nice going today. Thank you. Hey, this Russ Childs, Ole Miss quarterback. Russ, pretty good way to go out at home, huh? Yeah, it feels great being in front of your home crowd and beating Mississippi State. You know, this, this is what you play for. This, this is what we play for every year, and, and it feels great to win in front of your home crowd. Well, you've had so many ups and downs in your career, and I guess this is a way to go out on a high note. Yes, this is. You know, I, I couldn't feel any better than this right now. My senior year, you, know, you beat Mississippi State at home, and you know you can't ask for anything more than that. Russ, talk about when you in the locker room at halftime. I mean, you'd move the ball, just mistakes had stopped you. Would it? it was just soul searching at halftime? Yeah, you know, you know we, we made a lot. Of mistakes had six turnovers I think the first half and we came out and we, you know, we, we didn't change the thing up because we were moving the ball we were just killing ourselves and we came out and put our heads on white sticking in zone. Talk about the emotions after the fumble and everything. Well I mean it, you know I didn't know how to react at first it just you know felt like my, my heart fell to my feet and uh, the defense did a great job of holding them again and, and you know that's what wins football games too is defense. Sum up the season for us real quick what it's been like for us. It's, you know we've had some ups and downs but all, all in all I think we've had a, a wonderful season nobody ever thought we'd, we would be where we are right now and, and every one of us on this team feels great. Well you did terrific today Rush congratulations on a huge win. I say one thing right. mule lift mule lift mule lift. They're going to party big time in Oxford tonight after winning the Egg Bowl. It has already started right here at Vaughn Hemingway Field. A great win today for the Rebels of Ole Miss. We've got our Jefferson Pilot Sports players of the game today to look at. Charlie Davidson was a big man on defense for the Bulldogs. Six tackles. He had an INT and a fumble recovery, but that happened early. Corey Philpott of Ole Miss went over 100 yards today. Didn't reach 1,000 for the season. He scored a touchdown, but really along with that, Greg Bowser, the players of the game for Ole Miss today have to be probably every member of that defense. Maybe we'll talk more about that when we come back as Ole Miss caps off a great regular season with a great win over Mississippi State. Ole Miss 17, Mississippi State 10. They go 8-3 and three on the year. Let's get a final word from down on the field. Some of those stars of this win. Here's Bob Kessler. Yeah, there are a lot of them today. Bob Cassius Ware, the linebacker for the Rebels. Boy, you guys blitzed and played great, didn't you? Yeah, we, uh, we knew we had to go after them, so they're going to be tough. Uh, we stopped the running game, and in the past, they got to us a little bit, but well, we attacked them and uh, came up victorious. Coach Dunn said this is a fun defense for you guys to play. You never know where you're coming from. Right, we came from everywhere. We brought some uh, the outside, inside, everywhere. We was coming. How much uh, extra momentum? I mean, what are the feelings going through you right now winning this game? Oh, man, it was close, baby. Uh, it was coming. <laughs> Woo! Hey, it was coming, it was coming close to the end. And they was down on the goal line, but we stuck it out and held it.
Nice going, Cassius. All right, thanks. Congratulations. It's Bedlam down here, folks. They're enjoying this win. The Ole Miss Rebels over Mississippi State. A well-deserved win, and Greg Bowser puts an exciting cap on the season for the guys here. They brought the game back on campus, first time they played here in 20 years, and it's been worth every moment of it for the folks here. And first Mississippi State, uh, we need to mention the season they've had as well. Seven and four, they are on the right track with Jackie Sherrill, and I would guess that he's about to get a contract extension from what they told us earlier. That's right. I think both teams uh, really enjoyed this game. A strange first half, kind of a strange ball game altogether, but an interesting ball game, one exciting and there's no other way to end it I guess except uh, the way that they did Bob well, congratulations to the Rebels of Ole Miss along with Greg Bowser and Bob Kessling this is Bob Carpenter saying so long from Oxford Mississippi and the final score once again was 17-10 the Rebels over the Bulldogs the executive producer of Jefferson Pilot Sports is Jimmy Rayburn, coordinating producer of the SEC, Wendy Voigt. Today's game produced by Tom Hewitt and directed by Dave Burchett. We've had a great crew with us throughout the year. Our network coordinators back in Charlotte, Mike Voigt, our switcher, Scott and Snyder, and Gil Heron on electronic graphics, Pat Thornton, our audio guy, Dave Johnson, his assistant, and all the guys and gals who have done a great job along with us this year of bringing you Southeastern Conference football. I'd like to thank our spotter, Kim Anderson, Scott McKinney, our statistician up here in the booth. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot Sports personnel outfitted by Champion Products. It's been a great year. We're glad you've been with us for the past 13 weeks. And we look forward to more next year. But for now, congratulations to Billy Brewer and the Rebels of Ole Miss. They're headed for the Liberty Bowl with an 8-3 season. MSU on its way to the Peach Bowl. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. That's it for the season. So long from Oxford.